there are three easy steps in creating your resume link. Let me show you how. Step 1. Register Go to www.jobs180.com using any browser and click register now. Fill out all the information needed. In choosing your resume link, use your full name so that it looks professional and it's easy to recall by potential employers. For example, Antonio Juan de la Cruz at jobs180.com Step 2. Create and Design When creating your resume, make sure to complete your personal information and upload your profile picture. One of the highlights of the resume link is the portfolio section. In the portfolio section, you can show off your skills by uploading samples of your work like documents, pictures, videos, and your social media links. Your resume link also features different themes and you can upload a cover photo. This is a combination of a cover letter and a social network cover photo. Here is an example. You can also download a copy of your resume link and print it. Step 3. Apply for a job. There are many ways to apply with your resume link. First is browsing the job recommendations in your Jobs180 dashboard. If you are qualified, click Submit Resume Link. So what are you waiting for? Dress up your next generation resume, stand out brightly among the competitive job seekers in the market, and win the heart of your future employers using Resume Link. All right, so um, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Jobs180.com's Marketing Me Live at Divine Word College of Legaspi. So today we will be joined by speakers from DWCL's Admissions and Guidance and Testing Center in Spiro, VXI, Kamalig Bank, and Dole Albay. So before we start, may we invite everybody for a short prayer followed by the singing of the National Anthem.
mga kababayan ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Ayang Alright, so again, welcome everyone. You ready na ba kayo? So I hope you all are. And by the way, my name is Joyce from Jobs180.com. I will be your today's host. And we are live via Jobs180 Facebook and Jobs180 YouTube page. We hope that everybody is excited to learn new things today. Alright, so um, um, to officially start for our audience today, please comment your name, your year, and your course. And if you have questions later on, please, please type them in so we can answer them after the talk. And please don't forget to tag and share this to your friends too. So kung wala pa po sila dito, tawagan nyo na. Nakapanghinayang naman if mamimiss nila itong um, opportunity na event with Jobs 180 and other um, company rep. So um, if you guys are all ready. Okay, so here is our schedule for today. So... We have uh, the labor market information, which will be discussed by DWCL, interview tips by Inspiro, new normal environment by VXI, mandatory benefits by Kamalik Bank, and labor um, education for graduating students by Dole. So again, shout out to everyone who is here. Na again, please comment your name, your year, and your course. And as we go along, type in your question so we can read it later. Sabi ko nga. Please wag po kayong uh, mahiyang magtanong. This is your chance to ask before you face the real adulting thing or the world of work. So medyo mahaba-haba ang ating session for today. So please sit back, relax, and let us all hashtag learn together. Alright? So kilalani na po natin ang ating unang speaker. Okay? So for our first speaker who will talk about labor education for the um, graduating students, so, she is married to Mr. Daniel M. Mostalia, Mostalia, blessed with two children and graduated on March 2002 at Divine Word College of um, Legaspi with a degree in Bachelor of Science in Accountancy. Took Master in Management in Bicol University Graduate School in March 2012. She is a certified public accountant, also passed career service professional ex examination um, last February 17, 2003 at the Gaspi City and Career Executive Service Written Examination at CESWE um, last September 6, 2015 at Leman Quezon City. She was des designated as Accountant in 2014 and Chief Administrative Officer from 2014 up to present and currently the Alibi Provincial Head Effective October 4, 2021. Again, our um, Provincial Head from Dole out by Provincial Field Office, Ms. Cherry B. Mosatalia. Panghanap buhay sa ating disadvantage or displaced workers. Then, meron, meron din ang DOLE, Kabuhayan or Livelihood Programs. Ito yung nagbibigay ng mga starter kits, mga tools, or start-up materials ang dole para sa mga poor or vulnerable or marginalized workers para magkaroon sila ng kabuhayan. Then, we also have the SENA or the Single Entry Approach. Ito yung conference na hinuhold ng dole para kung may reklamo ang employee sa kanyang employer, so before pa man ito mag ripen into a case, pwede muna silang mag-conference 
baka mag meet in between sila. So, good morning. You started listening to Various Talks since 9am, no? So, I hope you still have the energy to listen to me. I'm Cherry B. Mosatalia, the head of Dolly Albay Provincial Office. I am very much privileged to be back in my alma mater, the Divine Word College of Legaspi, although this is only virtual. So I'm a graduate of this prestigious Catholic school way back March 2002, and DWCL was really a great factor and it really helped, helped me to pass the CPA board exam. So, you might be wondering why I will be discussing to you labor education. So, we call this as LEGS, Labor Education for Graduating Students. So, this aims to prepare graduating students in entering the world of work. This will help you became, become familiar with dollar services. We have services on employment facilitation, workers' protection, and social security coverage for the employees. So, <clears throat> these are some of the DOLI services. We have the SPES, or the Special Program for Employment of Students. So, siguro heard nyo na tong spesa, no? So, meron kasi nito tayo sa Define. So, nag-implement nito si Father Bernie, yung ating JPO sa Define. Then, sa ating mga LGUs, bali, ang conduit ng dolly dito is the pesos. We also have the Government Internship Program for the GIP. We also conduct job fairs and meron din ang dole to pad. So, nakikita nyo yung mga nasa tabi ng kalsada, mga naka-green shirts, mga naglilinis doon. So, program yun ang dole, yung to pad. Tulong panghanap buhay sa ating disadvantage or displaced workers. Then, meron, meron din ang dole, kabuhayan or livelihood programs. Ito yung nagbibigay ng mga starter kits, mga tools, or start-up materials ang dole para sa mga poor or vulnerable or marginalized workers para magkaroon sila ng kabuhayan. Then, we also have the SENA or the Single Entry Approach Ito yung conference na hinuhold ng DOLE para kung may reklamo ang employee sa kanyang employer. So, before pa man ito mag-ripen into a case, pwede muna sila mag-conference. Baka mag-meet in between sila. So, magkaayos. So, at least hindi na mag-ripen into a case ang problema. Then, we also have the labor inspection, technical safety inspection, and the disposition of general labor standards, and occupational safety and health standards. Ito yung <coughs> ginagawa ng mga inspector na dole. So, pumupunta sila sa mga establishments para i-check kung compliant sa labor laws and then sa safety and health standards yung ating mga employers. Then, we also have the registration of contractor and subcontractor. Then, the registration of rural workers associations or labor unions. Then, the approval of construction safety and health program. Ito yung hinihingi ng mga contractor kapag may pa-construction sila para ma-insure na <coughs> nasusunod yung mga safety and health 
protocol sa mga construction areas. And then, we also have the child labor program. So, bali, ang mga activities dito ng DOLE ay yung nagkakanta kami ng profiling sa mga barangay, sa mga LGUs, and then yung mga na profile namin na child laborers, i-refer namin siya sa partner agency namin. For example, pwede siya sa Corpus, i-refer namin siya sa DSWD, and then, kung baka pwede o mabigyan siya ng kabuhayan program ng DOLE o kaya sa CHED baka pwede siya maging ano, scholar so yun so proceed po tayo sa employment about sa employment po so the nature of employment must be voluntary the employer and employee without force or compulsion agree. So, the employee shall, in exchange of wage, rent the work or service to the employer. And then, the employer, in exchange for service or work rendered, pay the employee of his or her wage in accordance with law. So, the agreement may be in writing or oral. So, express or implied. So, the test of employer-employee relationship. There are four tests. So, first is the selection and engagement of the employee. Then, payment of wage, the power of dismissal, and then the power to control the employee's conduct. So, there are seven types of employees. So, there are, they are regular probationary, casual, project-based, seasonal, fixed term, and contractual. So, regular employees are engaged to perform activities usually necessary or desirable in the usual trade or business of employer and employed for an indefinite term and cannot be dismissed except for cause and with due process. So, sa probationary naman, they are hired on a trial period during which the employer determines his fitness to qualify for regular employment based on reasonable standards made known to him at the time of engagement. So, usually six months in ito po ano ang probationary period. Then, the casual. Casual employee is engaged to perform a job, work, or service which is merely incidental to the business of the employer. Then, sa project naman, this refers to an employee hired for a specific project or undertaking. Then, the third determination or completion determined at the time of engagement. In seasonal naman, these are work or services in need that are seasonal in nature and in the employment is for the duration of the season. Sa fixed term naman, hard for a fixed term and not necessarily in relation to a specific project or undertaking. Then, yung last, contractual. There are two kinds of contractual employees. They are the directly hired and the employee or hired by the employee or as employee of subcontractor. Ito yung mga um, agency-based. The employer has the management prerogatives while the employee has individual and collective rights based on the constitution, the labor code, or the contract of employment. So, when we say management prerogatives, these are the rights and privileges.
privileges of decision and action flowing from managerial control which embraces all aspects of the business. The nature of management prerogatives must be except as limited by special laws. An employer is free to regulate according to his own discretion and judgment all aspects of employment. And the exercise of management prerogative is discretionary. So the exercise of management prerogatives must be without abuse of discretion, tempered with compassion and understanding, exercise humanly, and if a penalty, it must be just and commensurate with the offense committed by the employee. So, management's obligations and responsibilities. The management should pay minimum wage, overtime pay, night differential, holiday pay, service incentive leave, 13th month pay, and the company should give weekly rest periods, meal and rest periods, the retirement pay, paternity and maternity leaves, and they must limit on employment of women, uh, limits on employment of women and minors, then <coughs> They must follow sexual harassment rules under RA 7877 and the Occupational Health and Safety or OSH rules. So, let's proceed to the rights and obligations of employees. So, the right to security of tenure means that a regular employee shall remain employed unless his or her service is terminated for just or authorized cause and after observance of due process of law. So, hindi pwedeng basta-basta lang paaalisin ang isang employee. So, the term of employment by the employee is either through resignation or abandonment and by the employer it may be actual or constructive so when we say actual <clears throat> there must be the cause or the ground plus due process to have a valid termination. So due process in the context of termination of employment means the right of an employee to be notified of the reason for his or her dismissal and in case of just causes to be provided also with the opportunity to defend himself or herself. So the sources of grounds for termination are, of course, the law under Article 282, termination by employer, Article 283, closure of establishment and reduction of personnel, and Article 284, this is or as grounds for termination. Also, Shem prepared in ma terminate ka based sa contract and then sa company rules and regulations. So, let us differentiate just cause and authorized cause. So, just cause refers to a wrongdoing committed by the employer or employee on the basis of which the agreed party may terminate the employer-employee relationship. Yung authorized cause naman, this refers to a cause brought about by changing economic or business conditions of the employer. So, 
Yung mga just causes of termination are serious misconduct, gross and habitual neglect of duty, fraud or willful, willful breach of trust, loss of confidence, commission of a crime or offense by employee, and other analogous cases. Sa authorized causes of termination naman, so pwede siya dyan because of redundancy, retrenchment to prevent losses, cessation or closure of business or disease. So, separation pay in authorized cause termination. So, kapag redundancy, at least one month salary for every year of service, a fraction of at least six months being considered as one whole year. Dito naman sa closure or cessation of business or retrenchment or disease, at least one, one half month pay for every year of service a fraction of at least six months being considered as one whole year. So, ang difference nila, kapag redundancy, one month salary ang equivalent for every year of service. Pero kapag closure or cessation of business, retrenchment or disease, at least one half month pay for every year of service. So, the investigation process. So, so, dapat, after the knowledge of course, meron mo ng showcase memo si employer. And then, the employee shall reply. And then, there will be formal investigation before the decision. This investigation process must last for a minimum of 30 days then there shall be attachments for of evidences if requested then for the preventive suspension naman this is imposed in the employee pending formal investigation of a reported violation so a consideration yeah, have you conducted initial fact-finding that can be the basis for determining the need for preventive suspension? Does the continued presence of the employee being investigated cause a threat to the life or property of the employer or to the life or property of the co-employer? So, so, remember, preventive suspension cannot exist. 30 days and it must be accompanied by written notice so that ends my presentation hope you learned something and for any queries po you can visit Dole Albay provincial office in the second floor of Ayala Malls Legazpi City thank you and good morning Good morning, Ms. Cherry. Ma'am, you're on mute po. Good morning, ma'am. Ma All right, so guys, um, the um, floor is now open for questions. So if you have questions regarding um, labor employment, um, please put your questions in the comment section. And we will try to ask Miss Cherry all your questions. So, um, mas maigi na ngayon pa lang, alam nyo na yung mga labor codes. Um, ano ba yung rights nyo as an employee para pagdating nyo or pag magtatrabaho na kayo, di ba? If may mangyari man na hindi natin inaasan, at least you know uh, where to stand, di ba? Alam nyo kung ano yung pinaglalaban ng uh, paglalaban as an employee. So, um... While waiting for questions, uh, Ms. Um, Cherry, so I'll be asking 
um, question na muna. So, ako na po na mauna habang um, nag-iisip uh, ng tanong ang ate mga um, audience for today. Okay. <clears throat> so, first, ma'am, uh, uh, how does education affect the labor market in the Philippines? Does educational attainment po ba correlates positively with the formal employment? Good morning. So, we all know naman that when an employee, an employer is asking, I have, is um, speaking for applicants, usually po ang hinahanap niyan ay yung may magagandang educational background. So, yun po, mas maganda na graduate tayo ng at least four-year course or kahit two-year course. Basta at least makagraduate tayo ng college, mas madali po tayong mahar sa mga um, mga private and public na, na mga <coughs> establishments. Pero sa government, so alam natin na aside ng graduate tayo ng bach bachelor, ang um, kinakailangan nagpas din tayo sa um, civil service na ano po, exams. Alright. So may follow-up question na ka dyan, ma'am. So yung sinabi niyo na dapat gadget ng four-year course, two-year course, um, mas madali po, no? Or, or it correlates positively with um, employment nga. But um, we have, I often heard po yung educate, educated unemployment. Tama po, no? Meron tayong educated unemployment saka frictional um, unemployment. So for educated unemployment, when uneducated people po do not find job, so it's called educated unemployment. How can it be solved po? Uh, usually po, may mga ano ang tole, may mga job fair. So, bale, um, sa job fairs na yan, na bibigyan ng pagkakataon na yung mga jobs talaga makuha ng mga graduates. So, para makaroon po ng opportunity yung mga graduates natin na ma-employ. So, nag, sa job fair po, nag... Um, nagre-request ang mga ang dole sa mga employers na maaari po mag-hire. Pwede nga po sila minsan nag hire on the spot. So para po hindi tayo nagkakaroon ng jobs mismatch. So yun po ang one of the strategies na ginagawa ng dole, yung mga job fairs. And then meron din po tayo mga, yung kina Father Bernie, mga JPOs. And then sa LGUs po, mga pesos. So sila po hanggat maaari, yung mga graduate po na para sa course na yan. So at least po, sana makakuha din sila ng trabaho po na para doon sa ano nila, pinagraduate na course. Alright, thank you ma'am. Thank you Ms. Jerry. So um, next question po is, um, one um, I think problem po um, regarding um, unemployment po is the um, occupational immobility. Tama po ba? Yung um, labor resources are usually occup um, occupationally immobile because it takes time for people po to gain the sufficient skills um, that are actually necessary um, necessary for working in a certain industry. So do you think po ba reducing occupational immobility um, will lessen or solve the unemployment in the Philippines? So, ano po yun, ma'am? Sorry po, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, is... Yes, ma'am. Is reducing occupational immobility will lessen or solve the unemployment in the Philippines? Meron kasi, ma'am, di ba yung after, uh, after you graduate, may mga um, studyante na tumatambay ng medyo matagal-tagal kasi uh, they feel na hindi pa enough yung skills nila. They um not that confident to um, look for a job kasi iniisip nila na baka kulang nga yung skills. So, nagkakaroon ng, um, yun nga po, immobility, um, it comes to um, uh, paghahanap ng trabaho. So, do you think po reducing occupational immobility will lessen or solve the unemployment in the Philippines? So, we all know the naman na industrial and occupation immobility are most likely to ha happen when skills are not transferable between industry and jobs. So, mm -hmm. if possible, um, May mga ano po tayo, mga programs na magkikater po dito 
sa problem na to para um, yung mga skills ng ating mga um, job seekers po ay ma maging commensurate po doon sa ano po sa available na job so ano yung question mo ma'am kanina if reducing occupational immobility, ma'am, will solve or lessen the unemployment in the Philippines? Opo. Yes po. So the government must have the op the programs to lessen that problem, ma'am. Okay. Um, can you ano po, cite or what you think are these programs, ma'am, that might help po? Opo. For example, ma'am, yung mga trainings po natin, mag-tie up po ang dollars, we test the... Pa para po mag-match yung skills ng ating mga job seekers po. Alright, thank you ma'am. So, um, um, another question ma'am. Guys, if you have questions regarding labor employment, guys, feel free to ask. So, wag po kayong mahayang magtanong. So, maigi nang may alam. Okay. So, another question ma'am. Um, uh, maybe ask po. Um, what are uh, some labor market issues po today? Especially po uh, dyan sa, sa, sa Salgasi or sa Albay. Number one po nga yung dahil sa pandemic, <laughs> medyo marami tayong affected na um, establishments. So yun yung naging issue for the past yeah. two years. But we are thankful now kasi po unti-unti nang bumabalik yung mm -hmm. normal and we have this new normal. So yun, nakaka-adapt na din po yung ating mga employers and then employees. So yun, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. And of course, ma'am would like to know which uh, industry po yung pinaka-apektuhan nung, ano, nung, nung pandemic. So, dito sa amin, makikita natin ang mostly yung mga um, establishments na napaklose dahil nga sa pandemic usually ito yung mga kainan so yung mga malls noon ang open lang mga groceries so yung nasa department store medyo nag slow down and pero nabawi naman ito ng ibang mga ano po dahil nga nauso yung grab then Yun nga, may mga option naman na nauso doon yung nauso din yung mga online selling. So at least po nagkaroon ng um, kahit papano income yung ating mga ano po. Totoo so, po no ma'am, may buti na lang meron tayo mga uh, food delivery service online. Ayan na pumalit nung pagkatapos ng or um even before the uh, uh, during the pandemic po no no. Um, um and of course um actually uh i ask ko po sana diba since uh, may mga courses tayo na under yung mga industry na apektuhan uh, po na um if um we just still be encouraging them to pursue to pursue their courses pero syempre sabi niyo nga po nakakabangon na and and if kahit naman po siguro hindi pa talaga totally um nandito ulit po sa taas po yung mga um, industries na to I think um, they can explore naman po other industries, other uh, um, 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 work, di ba po, rules? Apo. Yes, ma'am. Medyo nawawala lang. Okay, ma'am. So, I think wala na pong questions um, from the audience. Uh, Meron po ba kayong um, advice, ma'am, for the graduating students? Final word. Apa. Thank you, ma'am. So, dear graduating students, um, congratulations. Um, I hope makahanap ka agad kayo ng trabaho when you graduate. And if you want po the dole al buy, um, kung may mga question po kayo, pwede po kayo mag-visit Dito lang po sa second floor ng Ayala Malls, Ligaspi City. And thank you so much po for listening. I hope I had imparted kahit pa paano um, mga uh, makakatulong po sa inyo sa pag 
ang apply nyo po sa trabaho and then kapag nagtatrabaho na din po kayo, at least kahit pa paano may maalala kayo na mga um, sa mga concerns nyo, at least po, ah, na nasabi pala to kanina noon during our legs. So, at least po, sana makatulong din po yun sa inyo. And again, congratulations. Good luck po sa paghanap nyo ng trabaho in the future. Thank you. Thank you din po sa Divine Word College of Ligaspi and sa jobs that, ay, jobs180.com. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Cherry. Thank you, thank you so much po for sharing your time and your um, knowledge for today's session. Thank you so much, ma'am. Ingat po. You're welcome. All right. Thank you, ma'am. All right. So before we proceed with our next um, speaker, may I call on or may I invite Mr. Benedict V. Segovia, RPM, Registered Psychometrician College, Psychometrician Admissions, Guidance and Testing Center for the opening remarks. Hi, ma'am. Hello, hello, everyone. Can you hear me, Po? Yes, sir. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good morning. Uh, I'd like to greet uh, all uh, graduating students of the Wine Co College of Legaspi. A pleasant morning to all. So, did you know <clears throat> that before COVID, only 52 Filipino workers were working remotely? But this spiked to 85% during this pandemic. This is according to the study entitled Decoding Global Ways of Working, which surveyed 190 countries with more than 5,000 workforce respondents coming from the Philippines. So what does this tell us? Working remotely is now being normalized in the Philippines, and this includes the hiring process. So many companies nowadays are relying on technology for virtual recruitment. In light of this, it is imperative for our students to learn about the topics to be discussed today especially the crafting of the resume links. And also its potential of ushering a new era of job application and recruitment. The knowledge you will gain from today's career orientation would be a great help to all of you, our future graduates. When you venture to the world of work, knowing that nowadays everything is done online. So it's really difficult to pinpoint or pin down exactly when this pandemic will end. But the changes brought about by this event in terms of re remote working as well as the hiring process might be here to stay. So with this, I hope we can all learn from today's activity. So I hope all of you um, will uh, listen very carefully to all our speakers. And please do, uh, if you have any, if there are uh, gray areas, please uh, feel free to comment down on our live stream and ask your questions. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Sir Benedict. Thank you, thank you for raising the event. Kahit medyo, um, balikita po namin, medyo brown out po uh, in your Yeah, area. ay nako. You don't know what, we, we, what we've been through to this morning. <laughs> <laughs> At least, sir, um, nakahabol po. Okay. So, yeah, thank yeah. you, sir. Thank you so thank much you, thank po. You, thank you, Have a good day po. po. All right. So, uh, moving on to our um, next topic for today, which is interventives. Um, Ms. Revy is a graduate of AB Political Science with a Certificate of International Studies from the University of St. LaSalle, Bacolod. Having been in the BPO industry for five years, she has worked as a customer service representative for a year and is now a sourcing specialist for almost four years. Her passion for helping people has motivated her career through the years along with the excellent relationships she has built with people in the company. Her career allows her to interact with different personalities and ex experiences which brings excitement and spontaneity to her everyday life. Um, the can candidate engagement sourcing um, from Inspiro, Ms. Revy Lambarte. Good morning, Ms. Revy. You're on mute, ma'am. Sorry. Good morning. Can oh. everyone hear me? Yes, okay. ma'am. Loud and clear. All right. Thank you. Um, Sorry. Um, just give right, me one second to share my screen. Test. Yes, ma'am. Please test um, share screen. Okay. Um, is it on full full screen na pa? Yes, ma'am. It's up. So I'll leave it po. I'll be back um after twenty minutes for the Q and A. Good luck, Ms. Revy. Thank you so much. 
Hello, good morning, everyone. So my name is Ravi and from Inspiro. And today I'm going to share with you what an online or virtual or online interview is and why it had been the go-to recruitment process during the pandemic. So why virtual recruitment? One clear reason was because of lockdowns. People were not allowed to go out, but there is still need for extra manpower or employees for a different business sector, let alone the increasing numbers of job seekers. With virtual job interviews, there are already no need for someone to reschedule or cancel because of time constraints or go to a certain place to attend a single interview. It is practical in the sense that both of interviewer and candidate save time and money, also allows the employees to have a quick and efficient recruitment process. Through this, the employer also has a greater pool of candidates that would best fit the job description because it eliminates such factors like like candidates' location, work schedule, and again, again, because of how flexible things could be done remotely. Well, job interview, uh, job inter or virtual job interviews are now the new normal. So, with that, we will proceed with the four piece of the job or virtual interview process. So, we have plan, prepare, practice, and present make a career plan do you ever stop question whether or not you're on the right career path finding your perfect career won't happen overnight and it may take time to really find the right one for you you might even be thinking how do i even know if this is the right career or what the right career is you have to target what kind of industry, type of job, position you would want to be applying for. First, identify what you're good at, what you like to do, your interests, hobbies, and what you want to become. Make a list of your options. Try to create as many options for yourself so you would have plenty to choose from. You can also rank your option from best to worst. So rather than looking at the job titles, consider your interests, hobbies, skills, and from there, you may be able to really discover the career your path that you really wanted. Um, and finally, decide on the industry, type of job, and the position you will be applying for. Now let's prepare. <clears throat> Now you have identified your career options, it's time to prepare. Before going to job interviews, you should spend time and finding about the career, uh, the company. You have to know their culture, mission, vision, and value, values and achievements. You can do this by visiting the company's website. Well, why you should always answer or why you should always answer a question honestly, it's also helpful to do so in a way that matches the company's culture. Finding out the culture of the company prior to an interview can also help you prepare in terms of how you present yourself. Also, interviewers are going to ask you to explain why you want to work for the company as well as you better be prepared. Also, the, um, also look the company's mission and vision statement. So if the company pledges um, to do charity work, you can mention some of your interest on uh, in this uh, in the interview. You can share any experience you like doing feeding programs in your community, and that would be helpful. Not only finding about the company, but also the position you're applying for. The more you know about the position, the better you can express your qualification. It is um, if the position requires you to be a mentor for uh, to other employees, then you can mention on how you mentored your younger students in your program. If it's required, uh, it requires you to lead a team, then mention about the time where you were asked to lead a school project, or if you were once an officer to a school organization, like in a BPO or call center, the position requires you to communicate with clients and customers. So you can mention about the seminars, the trainings you've attended to, and the, um, or that that's uh, those that are related to the job requirement. And of course, um, uh, you have to mention the course you've taken related to this job. Next, you have to prepare your environment. This can be at home or in a trusted environment where you will not be disturbed. If possible, possession your computer or webcam where only a blank wall in the back can be uh, back of you can be seen. If it's not possible, try to manipulate the background so it appears that you are in a professional setting, not in your unmade bed. There are also some digital platforms that 
um, that has an option to blur or even change the background. Turn off your television, radio, or other noise before the be before the beginning, and make sure that pets and children are situated so the they don't make unannounced um, guest appearance. Lastly, get your technology in order. Be sure that the technology is being used for the virtual interview is installed and working before your meeting. Test your internet connectivity as well as your microphone camera and ensure you will be able to proceed without a hitch. Practice makes perfect. Go for a practice run. It is not easy at its, at, uh, as it seems to articulate yourself over, a over the phone or make the right impression via video. But practice makes perfect. Enlist the helpful and trusted friend or family member, someone who will be honest with you, and ask them to run through a mock interview with you using a virtual interview technology. In addition to testing your technology, your trusted advisor can tell you whether you are adequately seen or heard and how the lighting is, how you appear in the camera, and whether you come off as professional, prepared, enthusiastic, and interested. Also, remember, practice do not memorize. You don't want to sound robotic all throughout your interview. So here we have the common interview question. First, tell me um, about yourself. This question is among the first and um, most interviewers asked. So it's tempting to jump right and start in listing off the qualities that make, makes you the best person for the job. But resist. This is one way to break the ice and make you feel more comfortable during the interview process. Rather than talking about your professional skills, share something interesting that your interviewer might find relatable. You might talk about your hobbies and or, or an interesting major life event that you've gone through recently. So one of the goals of this question is to get to know you a little beyond your educational background and work experience. What is your greatest strength? Here is your chance to stand out. Give a specific example of how you have used your strength in the past. Finish by explaining how this quality can benefit their company. What is your biggest weakness? A better approach is to choose an actual weakness but not your but but not one you're working to improve. Share what you are doing to overcome the weakness. No one is perfect, but showing you're willing to honestly self-assess and seek ways to improve. Fourth, why should we hire you? This question is intimidating one, but enables you to summarize your experience and emphasize the unique strengths that bring you to the role and, re and results you've already proven you delivered. And fifth question, where do you see yourself in five years? Most job seekers take this question in one of two directions. They're either aggressively ambitious, they could say, I want your job, or they're too humble. I just want to do the best work I can and see where my talents takes me. Neither of the question, neither of the answer will do much when you are a position, but the interviewer would only want to know how committed you are to the job and the company. So 4%, perhaps the question popping in your mind right now is why should we really or um should we really just for a virtual interview? Well, the answer to this question is yes. It's very important to be able to present yourself properly in a virtual interview as it creates the first and the last impression. Makes good impression. The cardinal rule of any interview, dress to impress. When going to an interview, making good impression is very important, not only by how you present yourself, but how you look and play the part. Needless to say, clothing plays a big role in the interview process. Dressing up well not only allows you to look good in the camera for the interview, but also shows the effort you have put for the interview process. This shows what kind of person you are and how genuinely interested you are in the position. Put you in a right mindset. 
just for the job that you want to have. Not only this will help you uh, help your interviewer picture you and the role you're applying for, but it will help you in the right mindset. With this, you can showcase professionalism without dressing up makes you look and feel professional. It will also help your con boost your confidence. Represent. The dress part. Just remember that what we have discussed in dressing up during the virtual interview, just how you want to be addressed. It is a way to say who you are without having to speak. This way, the employer would picture you to the role you are applying for. Position yourself to win. Unfortunately, that firm handshake and enthusiasm you typically greet employers during um, an in-person interview won't translate via video. Instead, convey confidence through your body language, sit up straight, smile, and keep the camera at the eye level to avoid looking up and down. Some virtual interview software programs allows the employers to rewind, meaning bad moments can be viewed over and over again. Be authentic. Don't pretend to be perfect. Just simply be yourself. And lastly, smile part of dressing up for your interview is wearing a smile makes you look friendly look friendly and trustworthy so that's it for my presentation for um more uh, updates about our openings and the details of our openings please check our profile at jobs180.com forward slash inspiro All right, so thank you so much, Ms. Revy. So guys, again, um, if you have questions, yeah, feel free to ask us, put it in the comment section, and we will, we will try to answer uh, all your questions, syempre, with the help of uh, Ms. Revy. So, uh, syempre, malapit na ang graduation, interview time na, application time na, and syempre, yan lagi ang nakakakabang part po, ano yung interview. So, ha, ngayon pa lang, Okay, mag-ready na kayo, mag-ready na tayo, um, ask questions na, syempre. At, um, dapat i-ask natin, syempre, from the expert. So, um, let's, um, ask Ms. Revy. So, uh, Ms. Revy, while waiting for, um, questions from the audience, ako na po muna ang mauuna. Ayan, so, prepare po ako. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, of course, ma'am, um, kasama po sa inyong topic ay ang dressing up. Tama po ba? So um okay so what are the things a job seeker must expect po in the new normal especially uh, when it comes to um online interviews po? Well, actually, po, um, the only difference when we're doing interviews is being done remotely. But all throughout, it's just the same. You're still like talking to a live person. Um, in preparing for the virtual recruitment, you have to ensure that you wouldn't be late. Uh, also, you have to make sure that you're presentable and you have prepared everything that you want to discuss during the interviews. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Um, and of course, mom would like to know if it's um harder to assess po ba applicants or to interview applicants um um with um online platform po um than than um face to face interviews po. Shempre de ba may harang hindi mo nakikita talaga kung ano yung totoong um <clears throat> um character attitude or nararamdaman ng applicante mo. Right. Well, um, all throughout, I mean, we've been working at home for the last two years since pandemic. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, it's not that difficult to really identify their um, behavior or ca characteristic during the mm -hmm. interviews. It's just that we have, you know, the series of assessment that would really test their um, character. So, you know, um, if they're if they're a bit uh, worried, if if their behavior during the interview is not um, what they think that it is, uh, I think it's better that they do practice before that. As, as what I've mentioned during my discussion, they could actually do a mock interview together with someone whom they can trust, so they could, you know, uh, they that person could give them uh, what do you call this the the uh, their comments. Also, uh, it, it's a bit uh, difficult in a way that 
uh, I mean, reaching the candidates sometimes, uh, you're already on the last part of processing their application, then they suddenly wouldn't, you know, show up because uh, the virtual recruitment nowadays are very easy to access. So they could apply to as many as job portals that they want. So if they think that, oh, okay, there's a good offer on this company. So I'll just, uh, even if I'm already on the final interview, okay, dad, ma ko na lang yun muna. Dito muna ako mag-proceed. So sometimes, medyo, ma- medyo mahirap siya kasi it gives the employees or the candidates a lot of option talaga. So, um, ma'am, uh, we have a question from the audience, from Sir Wiedel Rins. So, um, ang question po is, what if there is an internet interruption, do you give them a second chance? Does it affect um, somehow the performance? Okay, so we have experienced this a lot during the recruitment process. Not every day naman you have good connection, especially with the internet here in the Philippines. But you don't have to worry if there are, you know, where schedules are sudden, um, uh, uh, prior commitments or commitments on that day because it's okay. I mean, you just have to be uh, honest to the interviewer that I cannot make it today because of internet connection uh, problem, because of an emergency. That's fine. Um, it's actually not I mean, that would re- wouldn't really affect your application as long as you, you know, you'd inform us ahead of time. Because if you, you know, you wouldn't really send us a message or wala talagang ano, um, infos all throughout, we would feel that, okay, this candidate might not be interested anymore. So you really have to follow through your application. That's very important so that we would know that you're someone who is interested. Okay, regardless, uh, I mean, masasabi namin, okay, regardless naman kahit wala siya internet at least makikita namin yung willingness nila to really you know finish the application process it's just that meron nangyari so that's that's totally fine tatao tatao po miss revy no we are we are so done with the ghosting so please wag niyo dalhin sa interview so um make sure na ano na uh, informed di ba ahead of time yung interviewer na um something is going on na uh, may um ganyan internet um interruption or um, you cannot make it on the day of the interview. At least aware po yung um interviewer so so um um they can reschedule another another um another um um set or skid of interview, right, ma'am? Yes, po tama. Mm-hmm. Sobrang sobrang ano na sa ghosting hanggang sa application din <laughs> Yes. And so yes, ma'am. So next, so next po um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, next question um, from Ms. Patricia Sariaga. Um, have you showed your sincereness towards the company that you are? How do you show your sincereness towards the company that you are applying for? Well, as an applicant, I mean, I've uh, I was also an applicant myself before. How I was able to show your sincereness is by willingness. If you're really someone who's, you know, um, eager to have a job, to apply for this job, you, you'll follow through your application. If no one is calling you, then ask them, hello, I was, I, I'm still waiting for your call. Um, you said that I'm on, I, I was supposed to be for, you know, for, for assessments. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, yeah, you can you can message us actually. You could message us that I really need a job. Um, um, you could message us uh, a follow up regarding your application. Um, being sincere is also someone you uh, who is also willing to you know um, take time to really follow through their application. Because sometimes because uh, a lot of uh, due to a lot of applications, sometimes nasi skip yung application nila. But it doesn't mean na hindi na sila talaga matatawagan at all. Because we're doing like a ro- round ro- robin when it comes to processing applications. So showing, um, well, y- y- if you want to show that you're really sincere, maybe during the interview, you have to really prepare. Oh, okay. Well, well the interviewer would understand that oh, okay um the she already uh, she really prepared for this interview so you'll see the 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 person's image or you you'd really feel it as a recruiter if this person is someone who's really sincere and would really want to get the job or would really want to be part of your company 
Mm-hmm. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Ms. Rev. Showing up pa lang for the interview, malaking bagay na. Especially yes, if oh. on time ka, di ba po? Yes, ma'am. So, um, um, speaking of follow-up, ma'am, application, when is the best time, ma'am, to follow up for the application? Is it right before the interview or should we give you some time like two to three days or yung iba po after a week? When is the best time, ma'am, to follow up for an application? Um, For those who haven't, um done with their initial interview or screening yet uh, normally are... yes ma'am sorry um normally po uh we're processing or well, as soon as we yeah. receive their application uh normally it takes three to seven days for them for us to call them but as soon as they already receive a call for the initial interview during the initial interview, you could already ask the recruiter, okay, um, when should I expect the assessment? So if the recruiter would say that it should be within the day and you haven't received any emails or any calls that day, you could follow up like after their business, you know, working hours. So let's say their 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 recruitment hours is only until 8 p.m. Okay, but they can follow up ng 8 or 1, then the you know, the recruiter could just simply tell you that um, since due to the flow of applicants, we're able to really finish everyone for today's processing. So we'll have to reschedule it tomorrow. So yun, um, if we don't have reply to them, then the day, okay, mag message sila. There are a lot, uh, I mean, with our company, we have Facebook as our one of our platforms where they could follow up their application. We have Instagram twitter so they could follow up on any social media platform but it would be uh, i think the best way for you to also i mean for that for for the recruiter uh, for the applicants or candidates rather to get um a reply um right away is to directly uh contact contact the recruiter who did her as his or her interview but if you know unresponsive then you can message directly the facebook page since uh you'll see naman if their facebook page is updated of course us recruiters we're looking for candidates we're we're looking for applicants it's there's no way that we will you know um dead malang yung mga messages nyo will definitely reply we should reply actually kasi it's really hard yes. to um look for mm-hmm. an applicant na willing talaga na sila mismo yung nagpa-follow up minsan talaga si recruiter talaga yung nag hi ano na answer mo ba yung assessments mo ganyan ganyan so minsan ka lang ay hindi naman minsan like mas matutuwa yung recruiter if tayo or applicant mismo yung nagpa-follow up Mm-mm. tama po yes, at minsan dalawang bagay lang yan it's either hindi nag um um tawag dito nag-update yung um, um employer or yung interviewer or sobrang kulit follow up ng follow up yung applicant which um i think sometime is a good thing lalo na pag sabi ko nga ganun yung employer or yung interviewer po no. yes. so um, um thank you ma'am another question marami tayong questions from the audience uh, miss Revy, i hope okay pa po sa inyo yes po okay next ma'am i'm from sir rj Rosero. Um, what is your advice to people who are nervous um, during interview? Um, actually, being nervous is given na talaga during the interview. Um, the reason why we're nervous sometimes it's because uh, we're really eager to you know, pass the interview. We would really want to pass the interview. So that's okay. But what you have to remember during the interview, uh, before getting into the interview, at least you're prepared. So that um, kahit, you know, nervous ka, you'd still be able to um, handle yourself all throughout the interviews. You have to ready yourself for the questions that might be asked. So... I think um, it's okay to be nervous. Uh, it's okay if you're a bit shaky during the interview. Um, my advice is for you to really prepare before getting into an actual interview so that even if you're nervous, you'd still be able to handle yourself and you'd be able to answer mm-hmm. the questions that would be asked to you. Even, you know, shaky ka or nervous ka, at least the recruiter would understand, okay, kahit, kahit, kahit kinakabahan siya, nakakas- nakakasagot naman. So, bakit, bakit natin i- um, if you fail kung nakakasagot naman? 
Mm-mm. Thank you, ma'am. And um, minsan dalawa lang din, dalawang bagay lang din yan. So yung um, wala, um nakulangan ng confidence or mayroong applicant na applicant na overconfident. Um, um, would like to know, ma'am, is um being overconfident uh, actually good po ba? Or is it parang mayabang? Uh, for me, uh, actually, it's a good thing. Minsan, minsan pag overconfident ka, yung recruiter pa yung na-intimidate sa'yo. But uh, not to the extent na sobra-sobra siguro, you have to also, you know, just answer the question based on, I mean, just give a, give the answer based on the question. Hindi na yung sobra-sobra pa yung i-discuss natin. Kasi sometimes if we're, we're overconfident, we talk a lot. So, um, if we, you know, we give also time, uh, give chance to the recruiter also to ask follow-up questions, eh, siguro, because they might be, the recruiter might cite something sa, sa alam mo yun, sa, sa answer mo, tapos, sige, chika ka lang yun dyan, and chika, uh, ano ka lang ng explain na explain dyan. But it's okay to be confident. At least, you know, um, as, as recruiter, would no longer ask you follow-up questions if marami ka talaga siya sabi. Because for, let's say for BPO, sometimes, um, most of the time, rather, we are just, you know, looking or listening to the communication skills, to the experience, to the skill set talaga. So, if there's someone who, who are confident, it's okay. Um, siguro, um, if we're overconfident talaga, it's fine as well. Just have to uh, remember that we also have, you know, recruiters on the line who's uh, waiting to, to ask the follow-up question. All right. So thank you, thank you so much, Miss Revy. Thank you for answering all the questions. Actually, may mga ano ba to, eh, natera, pero um since ready na po ang ating susunod na speaker. Thank you, thank you so much, Miss Revy. Um, thank you for sharing your time and your expertise um for today's session. Ingat po. We hope to have you in our um future webinars. Po. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Miss Joy. Thank you, Miss Revy. Thank you, ma'am. So guys, um, don't worry. Um, um, sa mga questions na hindi natin na-ask, meron pa tayong um, tatlong speakers. So ka- matatanong pa natin lahat ng yan. So if you're interested to apply guys at Inspiro, you may submit your resume link at www.thetrops180.com slash Inspiro. Okay? So for our um, um, next topic, which is new normal environment, um, Ms. Christine Jackson is a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Secondary Education from the Technological Institute of the Philippines. She has eight years of work experience in the field of BPO talent acquisition, which led her to a stint with VXI Global Holdings as a talent acquisition officer. With this role, she is responsible for talent acquisition, international sourcing strategies, such as referral programs and employee engagement. Again, the senior, um, the talent acquisition officer from VXI, Ms. Christine Jackson. Hi, Miss Christine. Good morning, po. Good morning, Miss Christy. Good morning, Miss Joyce. Nice to see you again. Hi. Yes, ma'am. Uh, um, yeah. Good morning, ma'am. Maybe now test po your um share screen. Okay. So again, okay. guys, um, while well, um, Ms. Chrissy is um, setting um, up, the, ayan na ba, um, um, it's up na po. So please feel free to ask, guys. So for the comment section, um, lagay nyo lang lahat ng questions nyo and we'll try to ask all your questions. Okay. Um, Ms. Chrissy, um, I'll be back po for um, the Q&A after 20 minutes po. So good luck, Ms. Chrissy. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Good morning. And I hope everybody's doing well today. Happy first day. Okay, so um, again, my name is Chrissy. Thank you for the introduction, Miss Joyce. And the topic that's assigned for me today um, is expectations in the new normal work environment. Okay, so um, I know that right now, medyo mas maluwag na yung ating... Um, guidelines but we still would like to discuss this because this is um something that we will be 
living by us, you know, with the coming years. Okay. So what do we mean when we say new normal? So this term has been coined during the start of the pandemic and it's a new English expression that describes the way people live their lives during and after the coronavirus outbreak. So these are the things that we have been used to simula ng dumating sa buhay natin itong pandemic. Now, um, for VXI, we have three priorities, three top priorities ngayong new normal na. First is employee health. So this includes deploying preventative and sanitary measures and facilities, social distancing, daily checkup, and significant education to our global workforce. We, um, we always make sure that Everybody in uh, in the company, in the organization, is um, well taken care of. And when we say employee health, hindi lang po yung ating physical na pangangatawan, but also our mental health. Right. Um, business continuity. So we have developed business continuity plans to meet each client's individual needs. Of course, we have to adjust as an organization so that we would be able to cope up with the challenges that this pandemic has um, introduced to us. And strategic long-term support, which is we're still ensure, uh, exploring strategies to ensure that employee health and business is continued. So we do not choose which is more important because both are equally important and both are being given equal attention. So that's our main three priorities for VXI, ngayong new normal. Now, if you would notice, of course, part of the new normal is the preventative measures. No face mask, no vaccination card, no entry. And this goes generic to a lot, uh, almost all of the establishments, right? So I think right now at this point in time, we are already used to this. We are already used to wearing face masks. We're already um, we're already open to vaccination. Because when the pandemic started, there were people. Ako, I myself was you know one of the people who are uh, hesitant about the vaccination. Pero as the years pass by. We are all very welcoming of this now. And that's why it's called new normal. Kasi parang normal na lang sa'yo. Right? Now you're wearing face mask when you step out of the house. It's part of um, normal na siya. If you're wearing cloth um, face mask, it's normal for you to have cloth face mask being washed as part of your daily um, attire. Right? Uh, checking of body temperature upon entry to the office premises. So, um, this too has become normal with us, needless to, to explain, pero the way that we are checking temperatures as well, if you would um, compare from the past, di ba, we would use the old school thermometer from yung, yung, yung what do you call that? The one with, I'm, I'm not sure, it's the glass type na shake pa ng mga mommies natin, di ba, when they check our temperatures. But now it's digital. You just um, focus your hand on the, on the, on the device and then immediately you have your temperature check right away. So ganun tayo kabilis mag-adapt in terms of I know this 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 time of um, pandemic. No touch hand sanitizers dispensers become very common and all of us would bring our own alcohol. Um dati ang keychain yung mga Tasmanian Devil no ngayon ang keychain it's a must that you have alcohols. And it's and we're used to it, diba? Everybody has been so used to it, it's part of your normal to bring item. Integration of sensor doors and elevator buttons and the improvement of other commonly touched areas in the office. So this is what we have noticed. So ito pa yung mga nag-improve um, sa isang... Uh, workplace, no? Uh, the ATM machines, the elevator doors, we have upgraded them to make sure that we limit yung touch kasi nga, we were trying to, we were 
um, protecting, di ba? We're protecting ourselves from transmitting itong ating tinatawag na coronavirus and scheduled cleaning every after a few hours. Although this has been already, this is being done already in the past kasi we talaga naman, we clean our facilities or we clean our um Uh, offices but it's become more dif- it's become different now because it's become more often kung dati the office is being cleaned twice a day ngayon it's going to be every after two hours right so that's how the, the frequency has changed in terms of cleaning our facilities so those are the preventative measures we have already also started preventing overcrowding and again with the term itself new normal sanay na tayo okay so seating arrangement shall observe one meter distancing so that dikit hindi naman dikit-dikit, pero we are very comfortable in terms of approaching our colleagues or sitting together and during meeting, right? But right now, we have to observe distancing. Limited people in a conference meeting or shifting to a virtual or online meeting. This is also very common. Um, I think yung online meeting has been very, very helpful for our business to be continuous in times na we cannot go out of the house. And avoidance of big group meetings, assemblies, or team building events physically. So as much as, ako personally, as much as I miss, uh, yung team building events, yung mga general assemblies. Of course, we have to comply with the preventative measures that our government and our organization is implementing because after all, it's still always for our safety. Okay? Now, if you would like to know how to cope in a, in the workplace, in the new normal, Three things. Number one, ECQ. Enhance communication quality, right? So, in this time of pandemic that we were introduced to work from home setup, 50% work from home, 50% work on site setup, we, um, we have shifted from seeing each other on a daily basis to you know, a different kind of scenario this pandemic. So it's important that communication is always open and is always consistent. And the good thing that this pandemic has brought and taught us is that there are so many ways available for us to communicate. Such as, ayan, we have um, a lot of developers found different meeting online or virtual meeting platforms. Um, we have a lot of platforms that promote team members to be together in one chat room so that everyone is aligned and connected. And that is something that is very normal to us already. Now we are communicating in a chat room and that we keep the updates cam- coming so that everyone can see. Second is we have to keep up morale between them team members. What do we say when we say um, keeping up morale? How do we do that? So, of course, first, our team members should have the right tools. Ano ba yung mga tools that this person needs to be successful in his tasks? Does he need access? What what um, What is the scope of the internet access that this person should have? Does this person have access to the records, database, or reports that um, that this person needs para makuha niya yung information na kailangan niya? So that's important. Second is, of course, we keep up morale by keeping up coaching sessions. And when we say coaching session, it does not always mean na meron tayong nagawang mali and that we have to be coached for it. When we also say coaching sessions, it also includes um, kamustahan. How are you today? How are you feeling about, you know, things are going right now, ngayong pandemic? So that to make sure na 
nakakamusta natin ng bawat isa is everybody still at the same motivation level as they were during pre-pandemic times. That's why we have kamustahan or coaching sessions, right? Next is, we have to give recognition. Of course, if you need to, if you want to keep up someone's morale, then we have to recognize that individual's contribution and how that person, if that person is doing extra mile, of course, we want to give credit to that, right? And ako as a person, and you know, you would feel good if someone would recognize you for doing a good job, right? There. Not only good job, of course, if there are opportunities that we can improve on, then that's also something that we also recognize. We also recognize opportunities so that we will not um, let the person be stagnant so that continuous growth is um, happening to an employee. And lastly... To keep up morale, of course, there should be an offer of employee growth. Um, from, from last week, I'm doing this kind of task. This week, because I did a good job, I will be interested to doing this this time. Diba? Parang nag-evolve yung kaya mong gawin. And when we say employee growth, is that not? it does not always literally, it does not literally mean na you get promoted from one position to another. Of course, that's part of it. But when I say growth, it also includes learning different tasks. So for example, if dati you are encoding the data, if you are already well-versed with that, we can move on to interpreting the data. How does it affect our, our um, decision-making? Something like that. So you get introduced to the level of tasks that are at hand so that you grow continuously and you will see what is your strength talaga, right? And lastly, be agile too adapt. So if there is one thing that this pandemic has taught us is that change is, well, change is constant, but change may not always be how we want to expect it. Diba? Who would know that in a snap, we would all be going back to our houses, right? And who would know that in a snap, we would be um, learning work from home setup, right? So there are so many things that have changed during this pandemic times and we have to be agile to adapt. How, If you haven't recognized, I'm pretty sure everyone in this um, meeting has adapted very well. Like how? If before you guys are used to attending classes um, at school, now you have to do online classes, right? And a lot of schools and universities did that. So with that being said, the modules have evolved, the medium of instruction has changed the same way how it is with the companies that are right now um, operating. So the same way with us, kung dati sanay kaming nagkikita-kita every week para discuss yung mga plans. Now, we still do that, but we use a different medium or a different tool. And that's how we adapt. We cannot be stopped from low, from learning, from growing, and from expanding. But we have to find ways on how we can get there. Regardless, may pandemic o oh, wala. Right? So, that's how would you cope in a new normal work setup. Now, things you need to consider when applying for a job in the new normal. One is recruitment process and how to apply. You have to know if the recruitment process will be happy. Because right now, um, we're already uh, level one, right? So recruitment processes, uh, hubs are open. Specific to VXI Global, our hubs are already open and we are already processing on-site applications. But we also have uh, online means for you so that you can apply so you can apply through social media you can be interviewed through different means but initially as long as we can have you contacted through your phone that's uh something that you know you will always be uh reached by the 
team. Now, if you're applying for a job, know the recruitment process. Do you do you need to fill out something online before you can submit your application? How many days will the application process take place? Do you need to go on site or you can just process virtually if virtual what's the mode of interview there are so many platforms right now so you have to be able to know what are those things that you have to consider when applying second is work setup of the job vacancies so are you applying for a work from home setup or a work on site setup if it's work on site what are the things that you have to consider what are the requirements of the company for you to work on site so those are the things that you have to also research and amenability or capability to do the job vacancies well of course we would like to put during interviews we'd like to put our best foot forward so that our recruiters will find uh will be able to evaluate and see that you are the best fit for the job part of what the recruiters are checking is that you're, if you're amenable or capable to do the job. And when we say in Tito sa new normal, kasi if you're, gonna, if you're applying for a work from home setup, the recruiter or the interviewer will also check is your internet speed at par with what the, require, what the, the company requires. Do you have the right tools? Or will the company provide the tools? Something like that. So you have to be able to know if you are amenable or capable to do the job vacancies. If you are saying yes to a work on-site setup and knowing that it's the new normal, that there might be changes on the quarantine guidelines because we have been used to it, are you sure that you would be able to go to work every day if, say, for example, we change again to a different level other than level one? Do you have a means of transportation if in case it changes? So it's something that you can also consider and think about, okay? Now, to wrap up this talk, I know that you are already very used to this new normal thing because we've been in the pandemic times for two years now or more. But this is a quote from Charles Darwin. It is not the strongest or the most intelligent who will survive, but those who can best manage change. All right, so I hope I was able to share something uh, fruitful for everyone. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation. Thank you so much, Ms. Pichi. So um, now, um, for our audience, um, please, um, the floor is now open for questions. So if you have questions regarding the topic, uh, it was discussed by um, Ms. M. Creasy. Feel free to ask, guys. So, um, yung mga natira dating questions kanina, we'll try to ask um, kay Ms. Um, so, okay. So, lang nawala pala ako kanina. So, here. So, I'll be asking mo na Ms. Creasy while um, nag-ready po ng questions ang ating um, audience. So, um, from Ms. Christine Ariola, the question was, what do you say when asked about um, the salary and what appropriate questions can you ask um, the interviewer? All right. Thank you, Ms. Joyce. That's actually a good question. What do you say when asked about your salary? Um, I'd say be honest, okay? Be honest if you already have a working experience. You don't really have to give the actual pay because, again, it's still con it's confidential information, but it's up to you. But I would recommend that you give a range from evaluate how much are you currently earning and how much would you like your salary to increase considering the position, considering the company that you're applying for, and be honest, okay? Um, if you don't have working experience yet, because from my experience, the ones who don't have, I mean, the ones that don't have working experiences yet are the ones who are uh, most, shy in terms of answering that question probably mm -hmm. because they're thinking and that's and this is coming from me when i was applying when i don't have working experience yet and i was applying i'm quite shy to say what pay would i want because i know that i don't have experience yet but um that's why they're 
is uh, there is room for you to research and prepare. Of course, part of knowing the company and the position that you're applying for is also knowing how much will you be earning if in case you land in the position. So um, my advice is be honest, okay? And consider, consider weigh, weigh the position, the company, and there. And what appropriate questions can you ask your interviewer? Um, there are a lot, actually. Uh, any question is welcome as long as it's not personal, I think. If you're not asking about the recruiter's love life. <laughs> so I think it's okay. Most of the questions that I have been asked, your, um, I have been asked was, um, well, there was someone who asked me, how many years have I worked in the company and why did I stay? Probably that person wants to know um, why. What what's good about the company? Why are you still here? And I think that's a mm -hmm. very good question, right? Um, um, there was someone who asked me about, well, most common question, how do I know if I pass? When will I get the update if I pass the interview? Those are common questions. And those are questions that you really should ask so that you know uh, what to expect. But in terms of question in general, I think it's okay to ask any question that you have in mind as long as it's not personal. All right. Thank you, ma'am. So um, another question, ma'am. Um, um, in relevance po, um, uh, with applying to several companies, so for instances po, na kapag may magandang offer na yung other company, how should we approach the other company na hindi na po kami magpo-proceed sa interview? It's best that you notify if you have if you're applying in two companies and um, you have already decided on one, it's best that you notify the other company so that well, for one, they will still contact you if you will not notify them that you will decline. So I, I recommend that you notify them. Um, I have already found a job and thank you for considering me. Um, I hope in the future if I apply, I'd be considered again for the position if there's an opening. I think that's the best message as long as you notify the other company. All right. Thank you, ma'am. So, yes, tama, no, magsabi, um, um, if ever naman uh, na may ganun. So, sabi nga natin sa um, nakayang um, speaker topic natin, no, no? so, huwag nyo dalhin yung ghosting, pang-ghost nyo sa mga employers sa yes. job application. <laughs> mm, yes, that's Ayan. true. Yes, ma'am. So, um, ang hirap humanap ng trabaho tapos hindi pa seryoso. Okay? So, next um, question, ma'am. Um, uh, there are some instances po um, that an applicant will have to attend two or more interviews on the same day and at the same time. What is the best and appropriate approach to this situation? Like parang same question um, earlier po. Mm, okay. Um, if you are an active job seeker, it is understandable that you are checking for opportunities into multiple companies, especially if you are looking at a position that's also open to several organizations, right? So um, my advice is polite and honest. You have to be honest that you have a pending interview somewhere else. Um, it's... it's, it's um, you have to be honest that there's a pending interview that you have to answer a phone call or whatnot. But um, I recommend before you arrive to that situation, because interviewers or companies would normally ask you, are you going to be amenable to take the interview at this day, at this time? Do not say yes to the two companies at the same time. So before you arrive to that situation, do not commit sa dalawang magkaibang tao ng pareho mong oras. Don't say don't say yes to the same company at 2 p 2 p.m. cuz you would find yourself in that difficult situation kailangan kailangan mong mamili. And you know in life if you have to choose between one and one it's always difficult. So manage your time, manage your interviews, manage you you're given freedom naman to answer if you can attend. Eh. Okay? But if it if and when this happens, 
be honest. Okay? Be honest to the other company that you'd like to reschedule. Hindi naman yung, hindi ko po masasagot interview nyo kasi mas gusto ko yung interview sa kabila. I think it would be better if you say, um, can I reschedule this at this time because I have a prior commitment, something like that. Pero let's try not to get there. Totoo, ma'am. And it's the commitment and um, um, being responsible po, di ba, for um, the yes. things na pinipili natin. So, Father Bernard is asking what is ghosting. Daw. Father, um, ano po, it's a millennial or Gen Z um, term. So, um, ngayon kasi yung mga kabataan. So, kapag um, yung jowa nila, suddenly hindi nag-show up, ganyan, biglang nawawala. So, we call it ghosting po. Um, with um, job application po, ngayon po, um, marami rin pong instances wherein, di ba po, may mga applicant na biglang hindi nagpapakita. So, um... Totally, may ganun, ma'am. Uh, uh, ask na rin natin, what do you think po are the um, 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 reasons po? Bakit po may mga applicant na biglang hindi nag-show up? So, um, most, may, may mga, we have different experiences in terms of ghosting, no? Mm. Uh, <laughs> uh, ghosting, ghosting, uh, during, because there are different modes of interviews now. Dati, it's always face-to-face, -face, right? Ngayon, meron na tayong over the phone, meron tayong virtual. If it's over the phone, um, most common reason ng ghosting is one, your signal. So, your signal or um, you forgot to charge your phone, you have committed to an interview, but you have used your phone's battery at the time when the interviewer called, hindi mo na-receive. So you thought, hindi tumawag si interviewer, so you do not make any follow-up. So mm -hmm. yun. Um, if it's a, a virtual platform, we have a lot of virtual platforms now, right? So there are some who would have issues with internet connection and there are some who would have um the problem there is some would say yes to say for example let's use this mo this platform and with the use of this platform you will be required to use wi-fi but that candidate knows for a fact that they don't have an internet connection but still said yes to that mm -hmm. interview so dapat at the onset you had to you you should be honest na i couldn't do it on this platform can it be over the phone so yun and i think the most um the most common right now because we're already processing on-site applications as far as vxi is concerned we would have um candidates who are scheduled to go to the site say for example we're having hard time contacting them so phone or through other platforms so we would ask them why don't you go on site instead so that we could meet face to face we could um, process your application and at the time when they are scheduled and you're waiting for them of course it's different now it's the new normal it's not like before na you can just you know, we, we still welcome walk-ins, but we kind of have like an expectation during this time, how many candidates are we going to have, but that mm -hmm. person will not show up. So, sayang, it could have been a slot to another candidate that would really mm -hmm. like the job. Totoo po. Ayan. So, thank you, Ms. Um, Kizzy. So, sabi ni Father Bernard, hala sa, kahit daw sa klase, madaming multo. Nako, <laughs> di WCL. Uh, Paredig si Father Bernard. Ayan. So, um, um, for ano ma'am, for VXI po, since um, um we are entering um shifting po to a new uh, normal um work setup po. For VXI ma'am, um ano na po yung um work setup ni um ni um ni VXI? Are you offering po ba work from home? And um can the um the students from DWCL um apply po um to VXI or to um Quezon City site or do you have um site po ba um office po ba in Albay in the Caspi? Okay. Um, thank you, Miss Joyce. Uh, right now, we set our candidates' expectation that the work setup will be work on site. Mm -hmm. It's because we're, of course, of course, the opening that we have for 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 agent positions are all uh, work on site, and for non-agent positions, uh, there are positions that can be um, done remotely, but still, there are the trainings are different. So. 
just to set everyone's expectation, we are um, promoting work from uh, work at site so that the candidates will be ready in terms of, say, for example, we go back to, you know, um, uh, an order that we all should go back to working on site. Everyone is ready. Mm -hmm. We'll be hiring the right people because it's difficult if we would be hiring those who are only amenable to do work from home, but when they are needed to report on-site, they cannot. So it will be uh, difficult. So right now, we set everyone's expectation that it's work on-site. Now, we don't have um, a site in Albay yet, hopefully in the future, but um, we are open to creating pro projects and programs where we would go to different regions and if they wish to join VXI, we would offer them um, possible relocation packages. We have different we have different sites uh, in the whole Philippines and that's something that we are open to exploring. All right. Thank you, ma'am. And um, um, one last question. For, uh, what are the things um, um, this um, job seekers po must expect when they join po VXI? Sorry, Miss Joyce. Can you repeat that question? So, sorry, ma'am. Medyo nawawala. Um, what are the things po um, this job seeker um, um, must expect po, um, especially um, if they join po VXI? Okay. For the job seekers who would like to join VXI, expect, well, like I said, that we are um, preparing for work at site set up. Just so in case we would all go back to site, we are all ready to do that. Um, our application process takes... 24 hours. Uh, that's the maximum. The reason behind that is we have assessments that would release results after 24 hours. But interviews and all will happen, I don't know, within three, four hours. It depends on the waiting time. But it's pretty short already for a BPO company. And if you will be hired, expect that you will be on for a ride a beautiful ride where you will have experiences um, in, an, in an organization that promotes passion for people and that promotes, um, that ensures everyone is um, well taken care of mentally and physically and um, that employees are put first. But of course, um, when employees are put first, of course, the organization also benefits from that. And that's what you will experience if you join VXI. Mm -hmm. And as Miss Gizzi said, um, she wouldn't stay naman for eight years in the, the PTO or in the VXI naman. Eh, hindi ganun, di ba po? Um, um, ganun kaganda yung benefits. So guys, if you'd like to join um, a VXI, um, you may visit their um, career site or you may submit your resume link at www.chops182.com slash VXI. So um, uh, ma'am, um, final words na lang po, words of wisdom for our um, graduating students. So, we'll um, soon venture out. Dama po, dama po. Words of wisdom. <laughs> um, first, congratulations. You guys are graduating very soon. And you will be working na. So, um, I... I I think my best advice is be open to new learnings because you're going to be opening a new chapter in your life. You're uh, going to be testing what you have learned in school and this is what you have been preparing for for the last couple of years while you're studying so while looking for a job find the one that best suits your capabilities and your interests and of course your uh skills so that you would know that you would excel on it and once you find it enjoy it and stay committed because it's, it's always important to stay committed you might find the job that you like but if you're not coming to work it's not gonna stay so you have to find the right balance between commitment and looking for the right um opportunity for you congratulations everyone Thank you, thank you so much, Miss Pisa. Thank you so much for joining us today. We wish to have you on our next set of webinars. Thank you, ma'am, for sharing your time and your um knowledge again. <laughs> thank you, Miss Pisa. Thank, thank you, Miss Joyce. Thank you, everyone. All right, thank you, ma'am. So um.
let's now um, um, proceed with our um, next uh, speaker who will talk about mandatory benefits. So um, she is currently the head training development and treatment unit um, since um, 2018. Other positions held are um, organizational development officer from 2017 to 2018 at Kamalik Bank Incorporated. Um, of the director, been a director also um, at Human Resource Management Office from 2015 to 2017 at University of Santo Tomas de Gaspe City, administrative officer for labor relations from 2012 um, to 2015 at University of Santo Tomas de Gaspe City, part time instructor from 2006 um, 2013 up to 20, 2016. Um, CASC and CBMA at University of Santo Tomas de Gaspe City, professional rec lecturer from 2005 to 2010 at Bicol University College of Social Sciences and Philosophy. She finished AB Political Science at Bicol University 2004, cum laude, Bachelor of Laws, um, took Bachelor of Laws um, at USC de Gaspe um, back in 2009. The Senior Assistant Manager from Kamalig Bank, Ms. Agnes Chona Magna de la Cruz. Good morning, Ms. Agnes. Hello, good morning, everyone. Can you see my slide now, Ms. Joyce? Um, not yet, ma. <clears throat> not yet. So, uh, not yet I already shared it. Uh, if um, I am, ma'am. Can you um stop share then then um sh yes. um share again na first week? All right. I'll try to. How about this one, ma'am? Not yet. Wala pa ma. And um, um, Miss Agnes, is it okay if you um turn on your camera? All right, wait. Okay. Can I just share? Sir, oh, again, guys, if you have questions, feel free to ask questions. It's up, ma'am. Um, it's already up. Can you see already? Yes, ma'am. I think. All right. I think it's Peace all right. Yes. All right. So good morning okay. once again. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, um, um, if you're ready, I'll leave it with po. I'll be back after 20 minutes for the Q and A. Good luck, Miss Agnes. All right. Thank you. So once again, good morning, Divinians. So first of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, DWCL. Uh, through, of course, the esteemed leadership of Father uh, Bernard and the rest of the uh, AGT uh, team. And of course, I would like also to thank uh, Jobs 180 for this opportunity under uh, the leadership of Mr. Kim. All right. So this is actually my end time uh, with uh, Divine Word, right? So I would just like to squeeze in my presentation for about like 20 minutes para uh, matapos natin agad. Okay, so I have a question here for you guys. So, hashtag go buddies. Uh, saan kayo pupunta? Okay, so where are you marching? So, you will be soon graduating, right? So, literally, you will be marching on to the stage. I hope that you will be having a face to face graduation uh, soon. But after that, after marching onto the stage and received your diplomas and transcript of records, where are you going or where are you marching? Of course, uh, you will be pursuing now your respective careers or jobs. You will be looking for employment and you will already be working. And it's very important for you to know what this job, this job or the jobs uh, that you will be seeking will offer you, right? So... This morning, we will be talking about employment-related uh, concepts. So the objectives of my discussion is to define employment-related concepts such as compensation, wages and benefits, and of course, to know and be familiar with the mandatory and optional benefits given to the employees by the employers. All right, so I would just like to present to you this uh, report from uh, DOLE, Bureau of Labor Employment, okay? So this is uh, entitled Jobs Fit 2022. 
So according to this uh, study or report, the top 10 key employment generating sectors are the following. So infotech and business process management, wholesale and retail trade, transport and logistics, manufacturing, construction, agribusiness, banking and finance, hotel and restaurant and tourism, education, health and wellness. So this jobs fit uh, is actually a report uh, used in the development of the industry uh, career guides and career information pam pamphlets which serve as a tool in helping students and the job seekers uh, to be uh, to make informed education training for their career choices okay so this was conducted by uh, the dole okay so in in the Bicol region uh, this is the uh, situation or in the regional labor market so in region 5 kung saan tayo uh, the key employment generators are the following. So it's more agribusiness, cyber services, construction, banking and finance, manufacturing, ownership, dwellings and real estate, transport and logistics and re renewable energy. So ito yung mga in-demand occupations and there's also hard to fill occupations. As you can see in the, in the report, the hard to fill occupations are mostly yung mga may license. Okay? Sige. So... According to this report, from uh, 2013 to 2017, uh, the unemployment, unemployment rate of, uh, in Bicol region decreased by 1.9 percent from 6.5 in 2013 to 4.6 on 2017. So may improvement tayo. And I hope um, mag-improve pa to. So meaning to say na mas sana mas dumami pa ang magkaroon ng trabaho soon. All right. Also, in the same report, these are the emerging uh, industries in Region 5. This is also uh, a report from, uh, from NEDA, okay, as you can see in the, in, the, in the slide. So these are the service sectors, the industry sector, and, the, and tourism. So ito yung report na nagather by uh, NEDA, okay? Now... Ano ba yung makukuha natin pag tayo ay nagtrabaho? Okay? So, we will define the terms compensation, basic wage, and benefits. Okay? So, when we speak of compensation, it refers to the total, and, total cash and non-cash payments given to an employee in exchange for the work you do for the business of the employer. Okay? Ito yung mga makukuha mo. Okay? Uh, may it be cash or non-cash na bayan sa'yo for the for the work that you rendered. In terms of the basic wage, these are the remuneration or earnings paid by your employer to you for your services rendered on normal working days and hours. So, ito yung cash part ng uh, pagtatrabaho natin. Ito yung babayaran sa atin in cash. And remember, uh, it's uh, the highlighted there are the terms normal working days and hours. Ibig sabihin, itong basic wage ay binabayad sa atin or kailangan bayaran ng employer pag nagtrabaho tayo on normal working days and hours. So ano ba yung work, normal working days and hours? Ang normal working days and hours dito sa atin sa Philippines ay 48 hours in a week. So that's six times uh, in a week. Okay? But some of our employers, we only report to work for five times a week. And the normal working hours in a day is eight hours. That's usually 8 to 5, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. But, okay, if you will work beyond these uh, days or working hours, iba na yung pag-uusapan nating uh, remuneration for that. So, papasok na doon yung overtime pay, etc. Alright? And of course, benefits. Ito naman yung mga non-wage compensation provided by our employee, uh, to employees rather, by our employers. In addition, doon sa ating basic wage or the normal salaries or wages that we receive. All right. So as I think uh, if you listened to earlier with the discussion of uh, the of Mom Cherry, uh, of the Dole, these are the applicable labor standards. So ito yung marireceive natin uh, na mga statutory benefits be, uh, based on our existing labor laws. So we have the minimum wage, which I already mentioned to you. Okay, the holiday pay, premium pay, overtime pay, night shift differential. Ang night shift differential is being paid pag nagtrabaho ka between 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Then we have service charges, service incentive leave. Uh, ito, na-mention dito ni Ma'am Cherry kanina. Maternity, paternity, and then other uh, pays. Okay, the 13th month pay also. Okay, and of course, yung ating mga social services, yung mandatory nating mga contributions, which I will later discuss to you. 
Okay? So, magkano na ngayon ang question? Magkano ngayon ang minimum wage dito sa Bicol? So, as of March 2022, the minimum wage in Bicol region is 310 per day. So, that's the minimum wage. Okay? But, the question is, can the employer pay more than 310? Of course, they can. Can the employer pay less than 310? Of course, the answer is no. Kasi ito yung ating required minimum wage. Okay? So, for the information of, uh, of, of everyone, yung ating minimum wage are determined by factors such as yung thresh, uh, poverty threshold, yung prevailing wage, rage, uh, wage rates as determined by the labor force survey, and yung mga socioeconomic factors like uh, inflation, employment figures, yung gross, uh, gross regional domestic product, among others. So, uh, before tinidetermine ni Dole through the Regional Tripartite Wages uh, Productivity Board, yung ating minimum wage, may mga consultations na nangyayari. So, there are consultations being conducted by uh, the RTWPB along with DTI, NEDA, and other stakeholders, uh, included dyan yung mga yung labor force. Okay? So, hindi lang basta-basta sinasabi ng dole na ito yung ating minimum wage. So, may basihan sila kung paano dinedetermine itong minimum wage natin. Alright? So, again, for uh, Region 5, it's 310 per day ang minimum wage. So, if ever you will apply later on for a job and you will be asked uh, how much compensation are you expecting, yeah, then you can safely say that as long as it does not fall be, uh, below the minimum wage, that's fine. Okay? So, that's a tip. Alright, so ano pa ba yung ibang employee benefits? So, we have this social security, mga bonuses, perks, mga health insurance, uh, vacation leaves, etc. So, I will be discussing that to you later. Alright, so let's go now to the government-mandated contributions. Ano ba tong mga compulsory, uh, yung compulsory coverage ng mga employees sa social security system natin? So, we have social security, the SSS. Okay, this is the basis. So, meron tayong social security act. Ang purpose nito is to create and provide private employees, their families with protection against disability, sickness, old age, and death. So, ang range nito ng contribution ay 400 to 3,080. Meron kasi tong table. I will show you later, pero hindi complete kasi medyo mahaba yung, um, yung table. Okay, so I will just uh, let you show, show to you later kung yung, yung part lang nun. So, for example, uh, ito yung employer share is 265. Ito yung range niya to 2,155. And the employee share naman is nagre-range siya from 135 to 1,125. So, mayroon share si employee at mayroon share si employer. So, take note of that. So, kung ano yung kinakaltas ni employer sa'yo, okay, dapat marimit yon ng employer. So, you can check that on the SS, uh, SSS website. And of course, ang counterpart niyan sa mga government employees naman, if you intend to, to engage in the government service, then that is the GSIS. So for the government agency, yung contribution nila or yung share nila is 12% and for the member is 9% based on the actual monthly salary of the member. So you just compute if ever you will be receiving a, a compensation or a salary in the amount of 10,000 pesos, then you compute yung 9% of that, that, that will be your share sa um, GSIS if you are a government employee. So this is the one that I'm, uh, I'm talking about earlier. This is the the table. So, putol ito ha, kasi mahaba ito. So, as you can see, may mga range of compensation on the left part. Okay? So, yan yung makikita nating uh, uh, tawag dito, yung package ninyo. And then, kung uh, how much yung corresponding shares ng, ng employer ninyo and yung share ninyo. Okay? So, you can just check the website of SSS so that you will be able to see the complete list. Okay. Another is the PhilHealth. Okay. Ito yung PhilHealth naman. Uh, under the National Health Insurance Act. This is administered by the uh, PhilHealth uh, Corporation. Okay? So, this is designed to protect employees with practical means of paying for adequate medical care in the Philippines. So, uh, actually, nag-implement uh, sila uh, this, for this year, supposedly, ng 3.5. So, from 3% naging 3.5, uh, from 3% to 3.5, pero hindi pa nila in-implement. So, still, we have the 3% uh, share or contribution of the basic salary. Okay, so if ever you are receiving 10,000, you get the 3% of that and, and divide it by 2, yun yung sharing ninyo ng inyong employer and kayo. Okay, and of course, the pag-ibig. Okay, so this is under the HMF law of the 2009. So, ito yung provident saving system natin. 
okay, both for the government and uh, private employees. So the sharing is one, if 1,500 and below ang ating uh, salary, so ang sharing is 2% sa employer and 1% sa sa'yo. If over naman 1,500, ang employer share is 2% and sa'yo naman ay 2% as well. Alright? So ano pa yung benefits in, in summary? So the SSS, ito yung mga social security benefits natin, sickness, maternity, retirement, disability, death and funeral benefit, and of course, we can avail of uh, loans like salary, housing, and business loan. And of course, for GSIS, may uh, life insurance, retirement, separation, disability, unemployment, survivorship, funeral, employees' compensation. For field health, of course, yung mga inpatient coverage, outpatient coverage, C benefits, and yung mga SDG-related. Okay? So, uh, meron kasing mga guidelines itong si PhilHealth or may mga requirements that you need to comply para maka-avail tayo nitong mga benefits na ito. Just like in other uh, benefits given by SSS, GSIS, and Pag-ibig. And for Pag-ibig naman, we have the Savings or Provident Benefits Claim and short-term loans so like multi-purpose loans, calamity loan, and housing loan. So basically, these are the benefits that we will be receiving out of the mandatory contributions that our employer will be um, deducting from our salary. Uh, every month okay and please take note if uh you uh, you can you can ask your employers kung narinit na ba yung mga na-deduct sa inyo kasi um uh, in my experience as an hr practitioner sometimes yung ibang mga employers uh, hindi hindi ko sinasabi sa amin ha kasi sa amin we really are religiously remit the the deductions of our employees yung mga naririnig namin uh, from our applicants May mga hindi na remit na mga deductions or contributions kaya uh, kumbaga nalulugi sila for for you so please check please ask your employers and uh, you can go online para ma-check natin kung talagang nirerimit ng employers ninyo yung inyong mga contributions all right if you are already uh, registered or meron na kayong account sa kanila uh, you can have this uh, ID so I'll uh, this is my uh, ID Pero yung sa PhilHealth, may updated ng ID. That's um, Mars color green yung color. Okay? So, this is for um, the SSS. Okay? Yung multipurpose ID. We have the PhilHealth and the sa pag-ibig. And this one sa top is yung tax. Okay? So, very... Uh, what do you call this? This is very sensational right now. ba? Aware naman siguro kayo. Ano? Uh, so, yan yung ID natin. So, saan nga ba pumupunta yung taxes natin? Okay? So, that's the question. So, pag ginaltas ba sa mga sweldo natin yung income tax, saan ba siya napupunta? Okay? That's the question. Kasi part yan sa ating mga deduction, sa ating salary. Okay? Pero, currently, ito yung ating rule. Okay? So, under the tax code, ito yung rule natin. If you are earning uh, not over 250000 annually, that's about uh, 20000 per month, then you will not uh, be deducted of your income tax. So, zero rate. Pero pag nag-earn ka na, ito yung table niya, when you earn over 250 but not over 400, there's a computation that's 20% of the excess of over 250. Okay? So, there's a corresponding computation. Alright? Pero, uh, saan nga ba pumupunta? Yun yung tanong. Saan na pupunta ang mga binabayad nating taxes? Okay. So, your tax money goes back to you in the form of essential services and economic benefits. Alright? So, ano ba tong mga economic benefits? So, later I will be discussing it to you one by one. Alright, I will just share to you the study conducted by the NTRC or the National Tax Research uh, Center. Okay, this is actually conducted uh, way back 2015. Okay, uh, NTRC is uh, under DOF or the Department of Finance. So, kung nakikita nyo dyan sa table, ang... In 2009, ang expenditure ng government per Filipino is 18,084 per Filipino, ha? And in 2014, may 25,942. So that's uh, a 43.45% increase ng expenditure. And the tax payment naman ng per, per Filipino is 11,373 in 2009. And it increased in 2004 14 rather by 18,303. So that's a 60.93% increase. And of course, for the taxpayer benefit, that's 6,711. And the increase in 2014 is 7,639, which is 87.85% uh, percent increase. So ibig sabihin na on the average 
ang ginagastos ng government sa atin ay more than every Filipino pays. Okay? So, kung nakikita nyo dyan sa weighing scale, this is what we get. Okay? Dun sa uh, isang part ng scale, yung lower part. And this is what we pay. Okay? So, kung baga mas mabigat yung nare-receive namin na natin kaysa sa uh, nabibigay natin. Okay? So, ano-ano nga ba yung mga service and facilities being provided by the government out of our tax money? Okay? So, first, on education. So, we have uh, public preschools, public elementary schools and SUCs, computerization program, public school teachers, school-based feeding program, free textbooks. Of course, yung mga uh, subsidies natin, yung mga TSS, yung mga INSET, yung mga researches ng mga teachers. We have scholarship programs from CHED, the OST, TESDA. Uh, and I think yung iba sa inyo are scholars nitong mga agencies na to. And of course, for the senior high, may, may mga school voucher programs. Of course, uh, kasama dyan yung mga, uh, mga scholar ng bayan, yung mga nag-aaral sa mga public, uh, yung mga tertiary uh, schools. Okay? We also have health and nutrition. So very, very, ano to, kumbaga, uh, important to sa panahon ngayon. Okay? So mga hospitals natin, yung mga rehabilitation centers, mga health facilities, mga ambulances, medicines, Okay, mga medical missions and of course yung mga salaries ng ating mga government doctors, dentists, nurses, and midwives. And of course yung mga treatment ng mga um, uh, diseases like yung mga tuberculosis, HIV. And of course yung mga free immunization natin sa mga mga bata. And syempre itong mga vaccines natin ngayon, di ba? Libre siya, wala tayong binabayaran for our first, second, and mga booster shots. First, second dose, and booster shots. Of course, on social security and welfare, we have, of course, yung mga rehabilitation uh, centers, yung mga, mga uh, what do you call this, yung mga youth na in conflict with law, di ba, nirehabilitate sila through DSWD, okay? And of course, yung mga relief operations kapag, ka, di ba, may mga calamities, bagyo, uh, eruptions, flood, di ba, may relief operations na ginagawa si DSWD. And of course, yung mga feeding program, and of course, yung mga four Ps, uh, I'm sure aware kayo nito, yung mga pumipila, di ba, ng mahaba, especially sa land bank, pagkukuha nitong benefit na ito. And then we have the Sustainable Livelihood Program, okay, pinaprovide ng mga government yung ating mga, uh, sa marginalized sectors natin ng mga pangkabuhayan. And of course, nang na-mention na ito ni Ma'am kanina, ni Ma'am Cherry, we have uh, job fairs. So aside from DOLE, mga local government units conduct uh, job fairs, okay. So, dito rin napupunta yung ating mga tax money kasi they give this to among um, employers like us for free. Okay? Then we have the special program for employment of students and then uh, and then yung mga space babies. May, I'm sure may mga space babies kayo dyan. And then we have also the maintenance of job seekers kiosks. Okay? So, aside from that, di ba na-mention kanina ni Ma'am Cherry yung GIP or the Government Internship Program. Alright? So, next. On housing, of course, we have yung mga resettlement, yung mga may mga naka-experience ng mga calamities, so medyo hindi na maganda yung area kung saan sila nakatira, so nag-provide ang government ng mga resettlement areas. Of course, housing assistance, settlements upgrading, mga housing sa ating mga uniform personnel, and other housing assistance. On roads and transportation, diba, may mga construction, widening and repairs of roads, uh, bridges, foot bridges, airports and seaports. So sa ngayon, meron tayong bagong airport, the Bicol International Airport. And then we have the mass transit railways. We have the PNR, MRT, LRT. Okay? And the street lighting system, traffic management, road safety devices. And for our agri, agrarian reform and environment, we have, of course, uh, assistance to uh, our farmers, like yung mga distribution natin ng mga seeds, mga planting materials, fertilizers, mga... Vaccines ng animals, mga fingerlings and brood stocks. And we have also the geohazard assessment. So, ito yung ano, itong geohazard assessment is, ang aim nito is to identify yung mga areas dito sa atin kung saan yung mga vulnerable sa various geologic activities or hazards like mga landslides or uh, floodings para maiwasan natin ito. Okay, and of course, the Comprehensive Agrarian Reform Program and the National Greening Program. That's why I don't I don't know if you are required to plant a tree before graduation. Kasi nung time namin, we require kami to plant a tree dyan sa paanan ng mayon. 
okay, part ng National Greening Program. Okay, on water supply and flood control naman, we have the flood control and sewerage management, the cleaning of manholes, and the dredging works. For power and energy, continuous electrification projects, and uh, continuous uh, exploration of various energy sources. Okay, and on trade and industry, we have trade fairs among Expo Filipino, di ba? Yung mga... Um, ginagather yung mga local uh, ano natin mga business owners to promote their products okay and then of course yung mga marketing and financial assistance on tourism naman de ba very ano to very uh, kumbaga sikat especially before the pandemic di ba it's more fun in the philippines so uh, continuous tourism campaigns ang nangyayari sa atin okay sana makabalik na and of course, on defense and public safety, we have to pay our uh, uh, armed personnel, okay, uh, or uniformed personnel ng kanilang salaries and allowances. This includes yung Army, Navy, Marines, and of course, yung Air Force natin, and yung PNP, uh, the Coast Guards, and yung ating mga uh, Bureau of Fire Protection personnel. And of course, yung mga sa veterans pension, internal security operation, territorial defense, etc. Ayan, fire prevention services. So, ayan. And of course, we have on public services, the operation of public markets, lotter houses, uh, proper waste disposal, operation of tricycle, jeepney, and bus terminals. Okay? So, ayan. These are the benefits that we receive out of the tax money. So, kung nagtatataka kayo, bakit wala naman akong dinidadakan ako ng income tax pero... Wala naman ako nare-receive. So, yun po yung sagot. Yun na po yung benefits na nare-receive natin sa tax money na binabayad. Kaya very important na nagbabayad tayo ng ating taxes. Kasi ang balik niyan ay para sa atin lang naman, para sa lahat. Okay? So, question. Do all companies or offices give the same benefits to its employees? The answer is no. Okay? So, do all companies, as I repeat, or offices give the same benefits to its employees? As I've said, the answer is no. Okay, so ang iba, uh, they give this or they provide this. We have bonuses or incentives. So uh, based on our, on my experience, this is dependent on our performances. So kung maganda yung performance namin, na meet namin yung targets namin for the quarter, then based on our existing guidelines, we are given incentives or bonuses. Pag hindi, hindi kami nakakatanggap. Of course, we have the paid leaves. Aside from the maternity, paternity leave na required or mandated by the government or the law, we have vacation leave, sick leave, emergency leave, sabbatical leave, etc. Okay, kung ano pang klaseng mga leaves na binibigay ng iba't ibang employers. We have also the flexible time or compressed work week. This already includes yung mga uh, home-based uh, home na trabaho. Especially nung nagka-pandemic, uh, kung baga naging flexible yung uh, work schedule ng mga employees. So kasama na dito yung mga home-based na ginagawa natin. And of course, uh, in some employers would give educational assistance or scholarships, uh, tuition reimbursement para sa employee nila and para din sa mga dependents. Okay, may mga, for example, yung ibang employees would give 100% uh, discount sa mga tuitions ng mga employees and their dependents. And of course, the employee, uh, employer, some employers would give loan assistance or mga loans na walang interest or lesser yung interest percentage compared kung maglo-loan ka sa labas or sa iba. Okay? We have also retirement or separation benefits. So may computation ito ang mga employers kung magkano ang makukuha if mag-retire ka. For example, after 10 years of service, pwede ka nang mag-retire. So mag may computation kung magkano yung makukuha mo. Okay? If manufacturing company naman, uh, merong discounts on company goods or products. So, pwedeng kung binibenta nila sa, sa market ng uh, 20 pesos, pwedeng ibenta na lang sa inyo ng 15 pesos. So, may discount ka. Okay? Some companies or employers will also give movie tickets, mga perks, restaurant or meal coupons, and birthday cakes. We also have free parking spaces. Okay? Especially now na medyo pahirapan ang parking spaces, especially sa Manila. Okay, we have also gym or spa membership services. We also have fringe benefits. So, yung iba nagbibigay ng mga allowances for laundry, clothing, mga rice allowance, free meals or refreshments. Diba? May mga pantry, may mga pagkain. So, binibigay silang libre. Board and lodging or housing, mga vehicle or transportation or shelter services. We have also health and medical benefits, uh, vision care, dental care, etc. So, especially ngayon, nagka-pandemic, some employers nagbigay ng mga vitamins sa kanilang mga employers, nagbigay ng mga free uh, face mask, etc. Mga fruits, okay, fruit baskets, so yun yung mga binigay. 
Okay, we also have hospitalization benefits just in case na makonfine ka. So, binabayaran or portion ng medical or hospital bills mo yung pagbayad nila ng mga drugs, medication, and other hospital charges. And of course, pag namatay yung employee or namatayan yung employee, meron condolatory or mortuary or funeral benefits. And of course, some uh, some companies would give shares of stock sa uh, mga employees nila. And of course, life insurance, so insured yung mga employees. And we have free cell phones and load, may laptop and other technology products na binibigay yung ibang employers. And merong daycare or childcare and nursing station or lactating sta uh, station, especially for the working moms, ng mga bagong panganak. Merong mga uh, ibang employers na, na nagpo-provide nitong benefit na to. And of course, we have uh, uniform or clothing allowance. All right? So, Take note, my last two uh, um, information, there are some employee benefits that are mandated by law, okay? while other benefits are not required to be offered by the employer, but they choose to provide for its employees. Okay? And number two, employees' benefits vary from company to company. Please remember these two things. All right? So before I end my discussion, I would like to invite you, if ever you're interested, we are offering to uh, new professionals like you a webinar on the following topics. If you'd like, you can contact us through this number. This is 99 pesos per um, topic only. Okay? So, di ba, sang kadadali ng 20 pesos mo? Ito, sang kadadali ng 99 pesos mo? This is additional information for you. So these are the top topics if you want to uh, avail. You can just contact us through that number. All right? And... I would also like to offer you our uh, products, uh, deposit products, especially yung ating basic, aming basic deposit account. Uh, 50 pesos lang yung minimum, minimum initial deposit. And ang interest rate niya, para magkaroon ka ng uh, interest rate, uh, 50%. And a minimum uh, ADB or 100 pesos para maka-earn ka ng interest. Pero pag open mo ng account sa amin, you have 50 pesos lang para mag-open. Ito yung requirements. And if you want, uh, I ask, I requested um, Miss Joyce to post this if you want to avail our products para naman uh, ma-entertain -ma namin yung request ninyo. Okay? Through this Google form, you can just um, fill in the, the form. Yung may gusto lang po, ha? Kasi we, we ask for your personal details. If you're not comfortable giving your personal details, what we can do is you can visit any Kamalig Bank branch nearest you. So anywhere naman kami in in region in the Bicol region, uh, may office naman kami. So you can just visit us there. So as early as now, I'm inviting you to to save, okay? Kasi, of course, you will be soon graduating. So to end my presentation, I would like to greet everyone. Happy graduation and congratulations. Okay, so Miss Joyce, I'm done with my presentation. All right, so thank you so much, Miss Agnes. So guys, again, if you're interested to avail Kamalig Bank's um, products or um, yun po, um, the uh, form or link is um, posted in the comment section. Ayan. So, um, Sinabi naman ni Ms. Agnes na it's up to you guys if um, you're willing to give kasi may personal information na hihingi. Okay, so nasa inyo po. So the floor is now open for questions. So if you have questions regarding mandatory benefits, guys, please feel free to ask. Um, put your questions um, uh, uh, in the comment section and we will try to answer them all. Of course, with the help of uh, Ms. Agnes. So while waiting for questions, Ms. Agnes, um, ako na po muna ang maunang tatadong habang nag-iisip pa ng questions ng ating audience. <laughs> Guys, um, it's um, um, better na you ask regarding mandatory benefits, especially um, magtatrabaho na kayo, no? So, sabi ko nga, you should know your rights and ano yung mga benefits na um, you should uh, do and you should get. Ayan. So, um, first question, ma'am, is um, would, like, uh, would like to know if um, what is the advantage or advantages of providing um, benefits or um, instead of cash compensation po. Ah, okay. Um, I, uh, kasi aside from the cash, uh, for example, ako, I would uh, take this for example, yung mga leaves. Kasi of course, uh, we need also to have some some time off sa work. So pag merong mga leave credits, especially syempre paid siya, na binibigay ng ating employers, that's also a time for us to to unwind, diba? to rest, to take some rest. Pero without worrying na, ah, wala akong bayad. 
So pa, pag nag-leave tayo, di ba? Pag meron tayong ganitong uh, benefit, makakapag uh, rest tayo na may bayad. Di ba? So this is also part ng ating mental health. And also, by the way, uh, in our in our company, we do provide mental health activities, mga simpleng mga engagement activities lang for our employees, especially nung pandemic talaga, kasi very affected yung mental health ng aming mga employees. So uh, kailangan naming ma-divert. We thought of ways on how to divert yung kanilang mga stresses sa pandemic. So ginagawa namin, uh, sometimes we we send them yung mga, kahit mga simple yung mga quotes for the day, or minsan may mga pa-activity kami na hindi naman work-related. For example, mga trivia questions about science, di ba parang refresher lang din about about uh, about show business. So parang ganun, para lang uh, kumbaga benefit na rin nila yon on their mental health. Okay? So, kumbaga, yung mga benefits na to apart from the remuneration or the cash would, uh, kumbaga, will make them more engaged and will make them more involved doon sa work and sa company. Thank you, ma'am. And of course, sobrang um, important ka ng mga intangible benefits kasi it also boosts the productivity and I think the motivation po, motivation po ng mga um, um employees po tama po no? so yes. um next question ma'am is uh, what are the major types of employee benefits we should know and get um yung mga dapat talaga ma'am ay uh, meron ng isang empleyado uh, yung employ uh, come again sorry uh, major types of um, employee benefits ma'am we should know and we should get so for uh, example for the, the fresh grads po na um um walang idea about um, Ah, okay. Benefits. Right. Kahit yung mga major uh, lang, ma'am. Okay. Of course, uh, uh, I've, I've discussed that already kanina, even si Miss Cherry kanina sa Dole. Of course, we need to receive yung basic uh, wage natin. That's, uh, sh that should not uh, be, ano, be uh, dispensed with. So, that's 310 yung minimum natin. But, I've, but as I've said, uh, kung magbigay ang employer ng more than that, that's very good. Okay, be, uh, above the minimum wage. But kung magbigay ng lower, yun yung titing na ninyo. Yun yung check ninyo. Kasi that's already uh, running against the law. Okay? So, or also, yung mga benefits, kasi yung mga other benefits, please take note, guys, na hindi pare-pareho ang companies. So, ibig sabihin, hindi pare-pare yung capacity nila to give us or provide us yung mga benefits ng ibang companies. So, for example, uh, Yung ibang companies, they they give um, signing bonuses, di ba? Pag firma mo pa lang ng kontrata, ng employment contract, may, may bibigyan na sa yung uh, signing bonus. So, for example, 10,000. Pero sa ibang companies, walang ganun. So, that would depend kasi, uh, kung baga case-to-case basis siya. As I've said kanina in, in the last part of my presentation, the, the benefits are, uh, are, are varies. Pero yun ang pinaka-importante is that meron tayong sweldo. Yun ang pinaka-importante kasi hindi naman pwedeng uh, magtatrabaho tayo na hindi tayo fully uh, or remunerated. Okay? And the uh, other benefits would kick in especially if you become regular employees na of the company. Kasi pag uh, you are still on a probationary, limited pa yung ating benefits. But stang importante, meron kayong sweldo. Okay? Alright. Thank you, ma'am. So um, another question, uh, Ms. Um, Agnes, is um, what are the employee benefit challenges facing today's businesses po? Okay. Uh, I think during the pandemic talaga, ang hinihingi nila is uh, yung sa medical, yung sa health benefits, which I believe uh, kung mm -hmm. kayo, kung, kung kayo ay, uh, uh, tip, kung kayo ay mag apply you can politely ask yung, yung employer to be kung nagbibigay sila ng mga health benefits Kasi yung iba, di ba, nagpo-provide ng mga health cards not just for the employees, but also for their dependents. Yun din yung mga kinoconsider din talaga ng mga applicants. So, uh, yun yung isa sa pinaka-importante din, yung mga health benefits natin. Uh, kasi nga, di ba, yung nangyayari sa atin ngayon na uh, during the pandemic. Okay? And uh, yun nga, yung mga leave credits, yun, consider nyo rin yun. Kasi magandang way din yun para maka-unwind tayo. And yun nga, be, be, be more productive pag bumalik tayo sa work. Okay? Totoo, ma'am. And um, the health benefits are most um, sought after um, than ever naman, eh, di ba po? Kahit naman before the pandemic. So, um, thank you so much, ma'am. Um, your ano na lang po, um, final words or words of wisdom for the graduating students, miss. Ah, 
Okay, so again, uh, advance congratulations and uh, happy graduation. Sana face-to-face -face na kayo kasi mas masaya ang face-to-face -face na graduation, di ba? So, uh, my uh, last words is to uh, start, di ba? Lahat naman tayo nag-start sa step one. Even nga sa pag-learn natin, di ba? Nag-start tayo sa ABC para tayo makapag- uh, uh, makapagsalita ng mga words at makapagsulat. So, uh, yun. Uh, i-remember nyo na lahat tayo nagsimula sa, sa umpisa, sa, sa level 1. And, kung baga, kung mag expect naman tayo ng ating mga, ng ating compensation, di ba? In terms of our basic wage and yung benefits, then, pre, dun din tayo sa pang level 1 muna. Huwag muna mag expect ng mga compensation na pang level 5, pero pang level 1 lang tayo. Okay? Kasi, mas maano kayo. Kung baga, mas, uh, tawag dito, mas... Uh, madi-discourage kayo pagkaganan. So, take it uh, one step at a time. Kasi, like me, ako nagsimula nun, ilang ilang pesos lang per day yung sinasakod ko. Diba? So, magtatsaga muna tayo. Okay? So, eto ang last uh, words ko sa inyo. If you want to be successful in this world, especially in your job, be committed, be passionate, and be, and be considerate dun sa time. So, yung, yung time ha, be punctual. Okay, that's very important na uh, sa work ethics natin as an employee. And, ayun nga, uh, not a paycheck, ha? Please don't be peso signed. Okay? Kasi mas maganda yung mas passionate ka sa trabaho mo para mas magiging productive tayo. Alright? So, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ms. Agnes. Mas importante pa rin ang peace of mind sa trabaho, guys, kaysa sa... Um, Siyempre, uh, bano na lang yun. Pero, di ba... Ayan. So thank you so much, uh, Miss Agnes. Thank you. Um, thank you so much for, for sharing your um um knowledge and your um um expertise um for today's session. So guys, um if you're interested again to um avail Kamalik Bank's products, um please fill uh, out the form. It's uh posted in the comment section, and um you may ask Miss Agnes pa for um if you have concerns. Thank you so much, Miss Agnes. Ingat thank you, Miss Joyce. Thank you. Um, speaker and topic for today's session. Um, he is current director of admissions, guidance and testing center, AGTC, and um, guidance counselor at Divine Word College of Legaspi Job Placement Office. Um, JPO manager, Divine Word College of Legaspi. He is also an anchor at Bosses Candios, Gabay ni Ato Gabos, Bicol Idol FM every Saturdays at 4 to 6 p.m., and anchor also at Hello Titas and um, Titos, Radio Veritas, Legaspi, every Fridays from 5.30 to 6.45 p.m. He is also a member at COVID-19 Bicol Telecounselors Group from March 2020 up to present. PRC designated CPD Monitor for Guidance and Counseling Profession from 2020 up to present and Mandarin Instructor at DWCL from January 2021 up to present. So that's two sims already, four sections. So um, again, the director... Um, of Admissions, Guidance, and Testing Center from Divine Word College of Legaspi, Reverend Father Bernardo, Bernardo Arcolera, SVDRGC. Good morning, Father Bernard. Uh, good morning, everyone. I hope I am coming to you clearly. Malino ba? Uh, I think, sir. Um, yes, I think, Father, uh, I'm not sure if it's on my end also, parang ako din po nawawala, pero um, we can hear you, sir. Father. All right. I'm getting an answer. It's clear. All right. Sige. Yes, sir. Uh, my um, topic this maybe... morning is about the labor market information. Yes, sir. Uh, this is the second time I am delivering maybe this. The now first test, one. Um, the, your share screen, Father. I beg your pardon? Hello? Oh, there. It's on. It's after. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, andito ako sa PPT ngayon. Are you the one? I am the one directing Change. it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing it. Yeah. Hello. Are you the one sharing for the screen, or is it our text? I, I am the one sharing it. Ah, yes, sir. Okay, po. It's already um, there. Um, yes, po. Ano? Nakikita nyo ba? Yes, sir. Um, please put it in full screen na lang po. Para full screen po. I'll, I'll put it in, uh, teka ha? Let me put it in, uh, yeah, okay. 
Yan, what about that? Yan, mas maganda siguro. Okay na yan? Alright po, it's up po. Okay na po. So, um, I leave it to it, Father. I beg your pardon? I'll be back po for uh, the Q&A. Sige. So, this is the second time I'm presenting this uh, topic on labor market information. The first time was with the senior high school students, our graduating students, grade 12. Today is the second time. And as has been introduced kanina <clears throat> in our... Um, Hello, titas and titos. For tomorrow, Friday at Radio Veritas Legaspi, I will be presenting this same topic, but I will be tweaking it because of the broader uh, audience that will be listening. No? It's about the labor market information. Sana pagkatapos ng uh, terminal ng presentation na to, uh, makadistinguish kita gabos ng tasks, jobs, occupations, and careers. Oftentimes, pag tinatanong ka, Ano ba mga tasks? Ano ba yung jobs? Ano ba yung occupations? Ano ba yung career mo? So magandang uh, just a little reflection on this. Some thoughts uh, para pagdating doon sa on-site, pag nag interview kayo o nag-usap-usap kayo, you'll be able to uh, clearly describe yourself as really in relation to these topics. Second, sana naman makonsider natin yung LMI sa ating direksyon, sa ating career. Uh, ano yung nabibigay ng LMI para sa atin? Saan natin makikita yung LMI? And what's the use of uh, the LMI in pursuing meaningfully our career? No? And I hope we will be open to the market of life kasi ang buhay naman talaga ay parang palengke. It's an exchange no? by honing our life skills in the face of the key employment generators and then making meaning for life. So, ito yung aking terminal objectives. Hoping we can have cognitive, affective, and behavioral outputs sa lahat ng mga participants. Uh, nasa na? Ba't hindi na ako makagkilos? Alright. So, um, a task. These are activities that you accomplish each day that comprise your job. So, kung teacher ka, mga tasks mo, nagtiteach ka, nag assess ka, nagde-demonstrate ka, ano pa? nagmamanage ka ng classroom. Tapos, pag job, ito yung mga, this is the position that you fill each day as, you, as a step in your career ladder. So, kung uh, education ka, nakapasa ka na ng board exam or hindi pa, and na-employ ka as teacher, you first are a teacher one. Ito yung job mo. Uh, master teacher after a few years, at tapos mo masters mo, or uh, talaga magandang performance mo, principal ka na. That's your job. Diba? Next is occupation. Ano bang pag sinabi sa'yo, anong occupation mo? Because occupation, let me see, occupation is the area of interest or industry within which you work. How my occupation? I am a teacher. And then of course, your career. This is the progression of jobs fulfilling your goals within your occupation. And that is your teaching career. No? So may mga iba, uh, helping career. Kami mga guidance counselors and psychologists, we are in the helping career. Yung iba naman nasa medical career, di ba? Ano pa? Yung iba nasa business career. Uh, name another career and try to check your occupation, your job, and your tasks along the way. Now, when we go to the labor market information, labor market, market palengke. This is the place where workers and employees interact with each other. Imagine na yung mga namamalengke dyan, pupunta kayo dun sa palengke, wow, yung mamimit mo, yung mga naghahanap ng trabaho, katulad mo, fresh graduate, or yung mga naghahanap ng mga trabahante. In fact, I wanted to post a picture nung old, nung mga naunang mga times sa atin wherein yung mga blacks, yung mga itim na tao, mga negro, sorry if I have to use the word, uh, nandun sila para sila mga manok na hinihintay tapos may mga sinong mayaman naghahanap ng uh, kailangan ko ng mga matitipuno na magiging kargador. Oh, ito yan ang gusto ko. Yan, mamili sila dun. Diba? In the labor market, employers compete to hire the best. And the workers compete also for the best satisfying job. So, labor market is also known as job market. And you have in that market the supply and demand for labor so that employees tayo, provide the supply and yung employers, yung mga bossing, sila yung nagpo-provide ng demand. 
So in any economy, the labor market is a major component and it is tied with the other capital, other uh, markets like capital goods and services, right? So that's your labor market definition. So kitang kita natin to adjusted na yung picture sa modern times na halos lahat uh, talagang nakamaskara. No? Everybody's wearing, wearing a mask. Everybody's making oneself available to work because we all know what has what is happening and continues to happen right now in our midst. Next is the labor market information. Now, this is it. Pag may labor market, maganda rin meron sinasabing information muna. A quantitative or qualitative information and intelligence on the labor market that can assist labor market agents in making informed plans, choices, and decisions related to business requirements, career planning and preparation, education and training offerings, job search, hiring, government policy, and workforce investment strategies. For example, kayo na mga mag-graduate pa lang. Wow! Nakatapos ako ng sabihin natin, library science. Okay, then I look at the labor market, nasaan ang demand for librarians. Believe you me, isa yan sa pinaka hot na hot na, ano, na, na trabaho. Bakit? Kasi kakaunti lang ang available na librarians. No? So kung ikaw na estudyante ng library science, you will feel very hopeful, di ba? Ay, salamat. Pagka, kasi alam mo, sa every year since 2015 na nagsimula ako dito sa Divine, I was assigned here in 2014. And then sa 2015, I met uh, Jobs 180 and we started our uh, next generation job fair. Ang mga librarians, ang lagi at laging, uh, kumbaga sa atin eh, hot, hired on the spot. Kaya lang sinasabihin sila ng mga mag-graduate, ay, dahil pa ngaya akong tapos, and hindi pa ako tapos, pag-graduate na lang, don't worry. As soon as you graduate, kailan ang graduation nyo? You come back to us, hired ka na. Ganun sila, ano, ganun sila ka very, very hot kasi sa dami ng demand, laka lang, laki-laki ng demand, and ang supply is very, very, very limited. Kaya, ang nangyayari, may mga, kumbaga sa atin, papresyo sila. Ah, nagkahanap sila ng mataas sa sweldo. Bakit? Kasi yun na nga, that's what the market is all about. It's a law of supply and demand. Pag mataas ang demand, pero malit ang supply, then the highest bidder makes it, gets the supply. ba? Diba? Ganun yun. Pag mababa ang supply at marami, ma, 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 yung mababa ang demand, na kaunti lang ang nangangailangan, and marami kayo, ayan, lowest bidder ang mangyayari. Kaya pamurahan, halimbawa kung anong, anong course mo. Kaya nga kung minsan, yung nursing natin dati, di ba? Dahil sa dami ng mga nag-nurse at uh, marami din, uh, kaya hindi masyadong kailangan ng kasi marami pang nurse sa hospital. Ayan, kaya nag very, very cheap yung sweldo sa mga nurses. Pero sa ngayon, uh, later on, I'll tell you something more about that. So in, in, uh, in a way, the labor market information can provide us advanced information relevant enough to the situation that we will be entering into. Ano ba yung nangyayari dun sa labor market na ganito sa panahon natin ngayon ng pandemya? Or siguro pupunta ka sa isang lugar, makapagtrabaho kaya kaagad ako doon. When you have the LMI, when you have a report on that, then makaka, ano kayo, you will feel more or less, sige na nga, mag-invest nga ako, mag-travel ako doon kasi immediately makakapagtrabaho ako with the skills, or with the credentials that I have, or with my openness to that, hindi ako magugutom kasi magkakatrabaho agad ako. Ganun ang ibibigay ng uh, LMI. Ang LMI, of course, uh, nagkakaiba-iba. There is a variability of labor market information. And these are the factors that affect the, the LMI. The demography. So the components and characteristics of a population. For example, yung size, age, destiny, density, and growth. Tapos, yung distribution ng uh, population, they affect also the labor market. The second one is the globalization. The transfer of information between companies and countries, creating new areas of work and occupations. So, makikita natin sa mga pictures na to, you have definitely demography, 
uh, anong mga klase ng tao ang nakikita mo sa isang uh, lugar? If you look at the picture on the right, itong uh, pinakahuli na present ko, mapapansin niyo medyo may mga kalbo-kalbo diyan at saka mas maraming empty space. Doon sa unahan, of course, marami din tao pero more or less makikita mo yung mga tao diyan medyo may edad na, di ba? So, uh, kung ikaw ay bata at pupunta doon, uh, siguro may makikita ka pa bang trabaho. Whereas dito, tingnan mo, halos ang mga tao during pandemic times, pu- puro mga naka-jacket, siguro malamig dyan. At isa pa, siguro may level of uh, competencies din pag pumunta ka dyan sa market na yan. So, i-adjust mo ang sarili mo dyan sa labor market na yan because of the demography and also because of the globalization. The other factors include education and training. Uh, this, this, this dictates the availability or non-availability of skills, talents, or professions required by the industry. Kaya if there are few trained personnel, the skills shortages will be the result. So if there are too many, they will not find work in their chosen field. Kasi sobra eh, di ba? Lagi may sobra, marami. Kaya kukunin lang yung talagang the best na my skill. Yung technological change, uh, new technologies have always resulted in the shift of jobs from one sector to another, resulting in the requirement for new skills to do the job. So this is a challenge for us today. You know? uh, grabe ang demand for adaptability to technology. So importante ito sa ating mga naghahanap ng trabaho. Uh, huwag tayong mapili. You know? Kasi after we graduate, especially kayo ngayon na mga kayo yung mga online graduates, graduates through online education, uh, ang dami talagang, sorry if I have to say this, pero ito lang kasi ang aking na-observe. Eh. Uh, marami kasi ng feedback sa amin na talaga, Father, ang hirap mag-aral online. Hindi lang sa kulang ang aking social skills. Parang hindi ako kumbinsido kung ang alam ko ay ay sapat na ba o hindi. And we can just surmise, we really are, uh, kayo na papasok sa job market, sa labor market, marami kayong inadequacies. And especially because the challenge of technology is there, may I just ask you to please open yourselves to learning. Kaya nga yung concept of adult learning comes in here. And many companies nowadays, ini-insert nila yan sa kanilang uh, profile meron silang continued ongoing training kasi grabe talaga ang uh, nawala sa atin because of the situation of the pandemic, di ba? So that's your technological change. And then of course, government policy. If your government policy uh, is there or not, may increase or decrease employment in a specific industry uh, depending on the nature of the policy. For example, ang policy ng gobyerno ay build, build, build. Kaya tingnan mo, number one, yung construction, di ba? Tapos tourism, ayan, kaya ang daming mga ano, ang daming mga hotels. Kaya lang, the pandemic has also affected that industry. Buti na lang, nag-adjust ang gobyerno. Yung mga hotels na walang mga bisita, ginawa nilang mga hospital sa mga nagkasakit ng COVID. No? Ginawang isolation centers or ang tawag dyan, quarantine centers. Of course, babayaran ng gobyerno yung mga hotel na yan. Diba? So there goes your government policy impacting on labor market. So these are pictures about the situation. Like if you look at the top, le- top left, uh, puro mga babaeng nakaitim, they're looking at now hiring. Ilan sila? Tatlo. Ang ina-hire ay isa lang, imagine. Uh, each of them has about 33% chance of getting hired. Dito naman, yung uh, labor market, look at how they look for jobs. Online. Yeah? Naka, ano yan, na puro computer. And uh, dito sa Divine Lord College of Legazpi, during the pre-pandemic times, we started doing that. Kaya nga tawag namin ni Sir Kim is the next generation job fair. Why? We do not need to give you paper resumes. Ibibigay lang yung isang, isang maliit na sheet of paper na kalagay dyan yung HTML mo, mahanap na yung iyong resume link. Diba? So talagang digital, no? The picture on the lower left is a picture of a big factory. You might notice towards the right side is an empty space in the parking area. What does that tell you? During the pandemic, this company has been affected in terms of 
the work at site uh, requirement. So, tingnan mo, nagkaroon ng napakalaking parking area na free available kasi marami ang nag-work from home. Or, maybe because that company was affected, yan, marami ang nawalan ng trabaho. So, immediately this picture can tell you what is actually happening in the market. And of course, you just have here in the lower right this picture of what's really happening in the marketplace. No? Marami mga stages yan. So, uh, these are the building blocks of the labor force. You have 74.307 uh, million the working age. 91% of that are employed. Uh, that's 39, more than 39 million. And then my 14.4% na underemployed and merong 8.7 na unemployed. Diba? So, this uh, data came from our October 20 labor force survey in the Philippine Statistics Authority. All right, so um, ito yung mga labor force building blocks. Pag sinabi mong labor force, starting from those 15 years old and over, they contribute to the production of goods and services in the country or in the community. So labor force comprises the employed and unemployed. Yung mga employed, ito yung mga tao na nasa labor force who are reported as being at work or with a job or with a business. Kahit na wala silang trabaho, basta nasa lang negosyo sila, they are considered as employed. Siyempre, kung may negosyo ka, iyo yung company, di ba? Ikaw yung kumikilo, so employed ka by your business. Persons at work are those who do work even only for an hour during the reference period. In fact, uh, kanina nabanggit ng taga Kamalig, ma'am, yung manager, sabi niya, ang daily wage natin ay uh, 310 and yeah, hire kita only for two hours. Yun lang ang ibibigay sa na trabaho. If that is the case, let me do uh, my computing. 310 divided by 8 hours because that's a regular one day. That's 38.75 per hour. Yan ang trabaho mo. And when you are, when you have that arrangement, even only for an hour's work, you are considered employed. Now, this term of the unemployed, of course, yung mga walang trabaho, Yung mga currently available for work at saka yung mga naghahanap ng trabaho or not seeking work because of the belief that wala naman trabaho eh, kaya yan. Or naghihintay pa ng result of previous job application or nagkasakit or na may disability. Tapos halimbawa ngayon, umuulan, kaya yan, hindi mo na pumasok. <laughs> hindi naman sa unemployed sila. Because some people, they, do, they may not be paid, no? pwede sila na hindi binabayaran kung hindi sila nag-work eh meron tayong sinasabi na no work no pay hindi ka sumuput sa opisina wala ka absent ka nga nga zero di ba you're also waiting to be rehired or job recall yun yung unemployed underemployed they refer to the uh, employed persons kaya lang dahil yung kanilang trabaho ay napakagaan Parang boring, boring sa trabaho, hindi challenging. <laughs> Underemployed sila. They express the desire to have additional hours of work in their present job. They want an additional job. They want to have a new job with longer working hours. Parang, you know, kapos eh, parang boring nga eh, hindi challenging eh. Kaya yan, underemployed. So kung ikaw ay musician, tumutugtog ka sa gabi lang, Tapos the next day, wala kang trabaho. Kahanap ka ngayon ng, ah, magtuturo nga kaya ako. I, I need to teach. Why? There is so much time available for you. You don't want to waste. Kaya feeling mo underemployed. Yeah? Over, uh, over uh, qualified, kumbaga. And then, this is just a picture about the situation. Diba? You see the job requirement. Help is wanted in that motor lodge. Nangangailangan sila ng helper. Alright, kanina nabanggit ng manager yata siya ng Kamalig Bank, madam. You spoke about the key employment generators. These are the areas or industry sectors dole identified as producing most of the job opportunities in the country. Nabanggit na to kanina, ulitin ko lang, ITDPM, wholesale and trade, transport and logistics, manufacturing, construction, agribusiness, banking and finance, hotel, restaurant and tourism, education, and 
health and wellness. So, ilang to? 5 plus 5, 10. Top 10. These are the priority occupational requirements. These are needed by the industry. They are either in demand, they are hard to fill, or cross-cutting. Uh, they are identified as in demand when the active occupations or job vacancies posted or advertised recurrently. Paulit-ulit na hinahanap. For example, ngayon, lagi ako nakita na nangahanap sila ng mga riders. Bakit? Ang taas kaya ng demand ng mga online business. In fact, marami mga riders ang yan because of the yung nagkakasakit din kaya kinakapos sila. Ang laki ng uh, ng online business na yan na kailangan nila yung mga nagdi-deliver. So naghahanap sila ng mga riders. So guys, kailangan marunong kayo magmotor. You should get your driver's license, right? The other one is hard to fill occupations. Uh, these are job vacancies that employers or companies have difficulty or take a long time to fill due to a lack of qualified or insufficient supply of applicants. For example, chef, uh, because of the conditions ng ating pandemics, uh, marami sa mga chef hindi nakaka-report for duty, kaya nag-work from home na lang, and they discovered mas malaki pa palang kinikita nila sa ginawa nila mga putahe kaysa i-risk kong sarili ko everyday to go to job, sa trabaho, work site, Dito na ako sa bahay, malaki pakita ko. So yung mga hotel na yan, yung mga area sa yan, naghanap sila ng mga chef. Ang taas, the, the uh, chef has become a hard-to-fill occupation. Diba? And then you have cross-cutting occupations. They are either in-demand or hard-to-fill. na uh, Tapos ito yung mga emerging jobs. They are new to the list of in-demand and hard-to-fill occupations. They did not exist in the labor market before. Uh, because of the technological advancements and innovations required by the conditions pervading. So, yan, meron tayo ngayon business process analyst, data scientist, design engineer, electronic mail and chat support agent, evisceration processor, hindi ko pa nahanap kung ano yan, genomicist, genomicist pala, genomicist, uh, mobile app developer, yan, yung mga ITCS na yan, computer science and IT graduates or students, ito, mal malaki ang demand for that. And then the nanotechnologist, the search engine optimization analyst, and the social media analysts. Diba? Ito yung mga emerging jobs. So, kailangan alam kung alam mo yung job mo, you can actually identify that. And when you're doing a good job and your company would like to reward you, oh, may manok dito sa harapan ko, <laughs> nagigreet sa inyo. Then you can uh, make other people see, ah, maganda, viable na trabaho to. Yan, ikaw yung magsisimula nung palengke na yan, ng trabaho na yan. Kanina nabanggit yung salary and wage kasi ito yung bayad in exchange for work. So pag salary ang term, ibig sabihin yan, yan ang buwanan mong sweldo. Yung wage, ito yung daily wage. Yung nabanggit kanina na hourly wage, yan. So... PSA requires salary and wages as, as payments in cash or in kind to employees prior to deduction for employees' contribution to SSS, GSIS, withholding tax. Uh, hindi yung real, hindi yung ano ha, yung estate tax uh, kasi iba yun. No? <laughs> Included are total basic pay, overtime pay, and other benefits. Yan. Wage against salary. Uh, and then of course, life skills. Very important yan. Hoy, huwag ka maingay. Nag-lecture ako. <laughs> nag enjoy siya. <laughs> Narilinig niyo ba? Anyway, life skills, these are very important because when you enter the job market, kailangan daladala mo to. Your personal attributes, your personality traits, your inherent social cues, your communication abilities needed for success on the job. They are not acquired through academic knowledge or technical acumen. And they are oftentimes known as soft skills or 21st century skills. According to the World Economic Forum, these are the top skills of 2025. Imagine at 2022 pa lang tayo pero meron na silang uh, prognosis ng mga talagang world uh, required na mga skills. Analytical thinking and innovation. Ikaw ba ay uh, ana, uh, magaling ka bang mag-isip sa mga nangyayari ngayon? With that, you will be 
taken in by the companies because you have a mind that can analyze and you can provide solutions. That's why research uh, and all of the trainings now in senior high school, they are actually uh, training us to go into this analytical thinking and innovation. The other one is the, your active learning and learning strategies. Kailangan, you, you need to love learning. Ang daming pwedeng matutunan. Tapos, ano yung ginagamit mong uh, learning strategies para hindi mo makalimutan, para everything is right in your fingers, pag hiningi sa'yo, may bibigay mo agad kasi alam mo, hindi ka sarado. Diba? And then, of course, your complex problem-solving skills. Uh, laging nakalagay doon, complicated. Diba? So, if you have this nature of being able to solve complicated problems, then you're in. Here are some more critical thinking and analysis. Kailangan marunong kang mag-critic. No? Hindi kayong, yes ma'am, yes sir na lang lagi. Tapos pag iniwanan ka sa trabaho, nakatunganga ka kasi hindi mo alam kung nung gagawin. Naghihintay ka lagi, nauutusan ka na lang. Pambira naman, you have to have your own ability to critically think and analyze and make the needed action. And of course, creativity, originality, and initiative. Talk of content creators, talk of originality and initiative, ito yung mga pumapatok ngayon sa social media. Of course, leadership and social influence, no? Kailangan alam mo talaga kung paano ka mamumuno. Hindi lang sa pamagitan ng pera, no, ang pamumuno. You can also lead by the integrity of your person and also your work history. And of course, your ability to influence. Of course, technology use, monitoring, and control. Kailangan meron ka integrity dyan. Uh, technology design and programming, just ko, ang dami talagang mga possibilities na skills. Resilience, stress, tolerance, and flexibility. Resilience meaning to say, uh, yeah, especially sa pandemic, ang daming tinamaan. Naging anxious kaya for some time, hindi agad nakapagtrabaho kasi nagkaroon ng anxiety attack. But, you know, after getting the needed support, nakabawi. No? Nakadevelop ng tolerance and uh, flexibility in relation to the stresses na dumating sa buhay. And of course, your reasoning, problem solving, and ideation. You conceive things in your mind and then you process them and you're able to present them and help solve problems. In the Philippine workforce, according to the DOLE, ito yung mga... Uh, strengths natin bilang mga Pilipino. Magaling ang ating English. We can speak and we can make ourselves understandable to English-speaking people. We also have a functional, functional mathematical skill. And then, of course, we have our workplace ethics. Ibig sabihin, alam natin kung late tayo o hindi. Alam natin kung ano yung uh, tama o mali sa pagdating sa trabaho. Di ba? Hindi pwedeng magmamarites ka lagi. Kailangan may focus ka rin sa trabaho. Di ba? Tapos, uh, English comprehension, of course, is with English functional skill. And multitasking. Yan, yeah, magaling daw talaga tayo dyan. Pero ang weaknesses natin, according to that study by uh, in cooperation with Dole, ang weaknesses natin, isa, teamwork. Mahilig tayo magkanya-kanya. Kaya ito yung malaking challenge sa atin. Kailangan yung ating social skills para makadevelop tayo ng teamwork. And then of course, when you're good at teamwork, other people will find you important and you will find other people important as well. So everybody gets uh, to have a sense of being valued. And isa ito sa mga ano eh, isa ito sa mga uh, kagandahan sa isang work area kapag maganda ang teamwork, uh, mababa yung depression sa area na yan. Of course, uh, another one is decision making. Nabanggit ko kanina yung tool sa naghihintay na lang na utusan, hindi nagde-decide on one's own. Diba? Please uh, keep this in mind. When you are in a company, you are part of a team and you will be uh, challenged to make decisions on your own. And don't be afraid to share how you made that decision. And when people get to know how you think, wow, you will be gradually taken in. Dadahan-dahan din kang tatanggapin kasi, ah, marunong itong mag-isip. Marunong itong mag And when you are able to do that, you will be a, uh, a reliable component of the company. Innovation, 
Yan, siguro dahil marami sa atin talaga come from impoverished areas. Pero sabi nga eh, uh, let us not make poverty as a reason for not growing up. In fact, there are many people who have come from poor areas and because malikhain sila, innovation uh, becomes their strength. Pero as of now, sabi ng study na ng Dole, innovation ay isa sa ating uh, medyo mahina tayo dyan. Planning and organizing, uh, Ma'am Beng, if you're listening, maybe we should come up with our own uh, webinar series on planning and organizing. Para yung mga graduates na to, pagpasok nila sa, ano, sa trabaho, they can organize and make plans about their next steps hanggang makuha nila yung kanilang trabaho. And then, when they're in their work already, then alam nila kung anong gagawin. Because they have target goals, they have their uh, yung other components of planning and organizing. And then, of course, is the creative problem solving is one of our weaknesses. Bakit ba mahina tayo sa creative problem solving? Um, it made me ask, you know, bakit? Anong problema natin? Bakit hindi tayo maka-solve ng mga problema creatively? Is it because uh, lagi nating iniisip, ano kayang iisipin nila? Ano kayang tingin nila? No, hindi tayo makapag-isip on our own. And uh, isa sa mga iniisip ko is yung isang result ng uh, psychological test which hampers uh, our creativity when it comes to solving problem. I will I will share with you later on that uh, in the right uh, environment, not here. Pero yan ang nakikita ko. I think it must be one of the reasons why yung ating problem-solving skills are less creative. No? Mas gusto natin top-down. Hindi pwede. We, once makagraduate na tayo, there is an assumption from companies, from adults, that you can be relied on. Imagine, once you reach 18 years old, you can already choose. Pwede ka nang mamili kung sino ang gusto mo maging pangulo ng bayan natin, sino maging mayor ng ating lugar, sino magiging barangay chairman. At kahit sa bahay, kung uh, ano ang desisyon mo, aasahan ka na. So, uh, we might as well strengthen our persons and our abilities and our confidence. All right? Uh, saan galing ang LMI? Let me just put them out one by one like this. Pakukuha natin yan. Uh, dito sa Divine Word College of Legaspi, we have the latest LMI from Dole. So, uh, you can come to us and you can... Mamaya, ipapakita ko yung isang model na LMI which I got from Dole, DLE, uh, Bureau of Labor and Employment. Ito yung mga current sources. You can get it from the peso, Ligaspi as a peso. I think your own places like Ligao, uh, Tiwi, kung saan pa man, even mas bate may mga peso offices. I am a member of the Albay Peso Federation and also of the Bicol uh, Peso Federation. Yan, lagi meron niya makukuha na LMI. You can request them. Tapos local and global job websites. You can go to the uh, websites and you can find them. Fieldjob.net has it also. We have at the Philippine Overseas Employment uh, ano yung A administration. There is a website and you can find the LMI. Of course, labor attaches and welfare officers can also provide you the LMI. And then, of course, at the classified ads. OFW and OFW organizations, can, they can also provide us an idea of uh, the LMI. Placement agency organizations, meron din silang OMI, LMI, OMI. Who am I? Paano ga, ano paggamit ng LMI? Nabanggit na to kanina eh. Um, para sa nagpa-planning kung anong program ang kukunin sa college. So ikaw mag-graduate ka na eh. Paano yung kapatid mo mag-graduate pa lang from ano? From grade 10, anong kukunin niya sa senior high? O mag-graduate na sa grade 12, anong kukunin niya sa college? Diba? The LMI can help us plan out yung long-term or short-term para sa ating college or senior high school. Because the LMI provides information on the demands of the industry. The in-demand, hard-to-fill, and emerging jobs within a given period which can help you decide what program or course to take for senior high or for college. Kasi yung LMI also identifies the key employment generators or the industries 
which provide most of the employment opportunities in the labor market. Diba? Karamihan naman sa mga magulang or when you become a parent yourself later on, I think you'll be happy having a son or a daughter who is thinking of, ma, natapos ko mag-graduate, gusto ko makapagtrabaho agad. Maybe after a year of vacation. Wow! <laughs> Magastos to. Kailangan pag-graduate mo. Wala na akong alawan sa ibibigay sa'yo. Matuto ka ng maghanap ng sarili mong diskarte at kumita, di ba? So, uh, we can utilize the LMI for that. And then, if you're curious about salaries and wages, yan, LMI also provides that kasi, of course, sino bang gusto ng uh, yung sweldo mo ay hindi nga kayang magbayad sa pamasahe mo, di ba? Hindi nga kayang bumili ng, ng lunch mo or dinner mo, aasa ka na naman sa tatay at nanay mo. Ito yung importante, pag naghahanap ka na ng trabaho, get a work that will at least, hindi ka naman lagi mangungutang. Di ba? Meron, meron kang, ano, may makakasave ka naman ng kaunti. Because the LMI presents salary scales of various jobs that are available in the market. Alright? So, yun. Nabanggit ito lahat kanina, yung mga types of compensation and benefits. Alright? Ano pa? Gusto mong malaman yung overall labor market condition? Para ke? Uh, kasi gusto mong malaman kung sa kayong economy uh, how is the economy doing and how easy or difficult it is or it will be to find a job siguro mas magandang wag muna ako maghanap ng trabaho kasi mas malaki yung gagastusin ko kaysa yung dito ako sa bahay ano kaya mag online na lang online selling na lang kaya ako or magtanim na lang ako ng kamote sa labas malaki naman ang lupa namin Baka mamaya pag nakakuha ko ng maraming kamote, i-online selling ko yan, di ba? O kaya sa mga kapitbahay, mamigay ako kasi maraming nagugutom, di ba? That's one of the uh, benefits of having an LMI. My employment, underemployment, unemployment, they are indicators of the overall labor market condition. Am I open to be underemployed? Mas mabuting meron akong sweldo monthly kaysa yung unemployed ako. Lagi akong naka... Yung kamay ko ay bukas palad sa aking mga magulang. And also yung puso ko ay lagi kong binubuksan na mapagsabihan ng aking nanay o tatay, Hoy, magtrabaho ka na. Malaki ka na. Kuminsan, we will feel a little low about uh, emotionally kasi sa sitwasyon natin. Diba? So, uh, if you're looking for available jobs or hiring people in your locality, LMI can provide you that. The useful data sets can be customized for specific purposes. So like job demands in your locality and then available supply of workers. Sa Divine Word College of Legaspi, we have a DWCL Peso FB page. We are in partnership with the Department of Social Welfare and Development. And every time we receive a vacancy posts from the DSWD, we post them there. Kaya... Kung minsan ngayon, after meron kasing nangyayari, we're making the arrangements dahil uh, ang Facebook, pag mag-post ka ng job, of course, may sinasabi tayong prescription period. Yung mag apply ka, tapos uh, that period of application will have a limit, may prescription period yan. For example, natapos na yung last na job offering nila, last March 27. So pag March 28, I declared it close. Eh, tinatanong ako ng Facebook, meron ka bang na-hire because of this particular job position? Eh, wala akong nakukuha galing sa kanila kung sino yung na-hire nila mula sa pagkakaalam doon sa site namin. So, uh, kaya, because of that, hindi na ako pwede mag-post sa mga job, uh, job vacancies. So, what I do is, tinatagalog ko, o, oh, yung mga nangangailangan dyan ng trabaho, uh, mag-message kayo sa akin dahil may availability. Ayan, nakakuha ko ng mga nag apply Anong kailangan? Ah, ito, binibigyan ko ng description, pati yung sweldo. Ako, ang daming naghahanap ng trabaho pag sweldo ang pinag-uusapan. Pero pagdating doon, nakikita, ay, hindi ako yung hinahanap. Pero that's it. You're looking for available jobs. You're looking for uh, companies in need of people in the locality. That's it. If you like to develop your skills to increase employability, merong information na binibigay yung LMI. May mga training that workers can avail to boost their chances of being employed. For example, 
yun na nga, sabi ko kanina, halimbawa, dahil mataas ang demand for riders, anong implication yan? Eh, kailangan matuto ka mag-drive. Eh ngayon, hindi ka na makakuha ng driver's license na hindi ka nag-aaral. So, ma, pa, kailangan ko mag-aaral, mag-drive, how to drive a motor, makakuha ng lisensya. Magkano yan? 6-5? Anak, mukhang malaki yan. Pwede ba, uh, may binibigay naman ako na lawan sa you every month? Uh, pwede ba tipirin mo ang kalahate? Pag nakatipid ka ng kalahate, dudoblihin ko yan. So, may pambayad ka na sa pag-driving. Diba? So, that's it. Um, let me show you. Uh, let me see if it still connects. Let me connect you to that. Uh, sana mabuksan ito. Ayun! Ah, very nice. Can you see this? Ayan. Uh, hindi pa lumabas, ano? Ayun, ayun, ayun. This is the Jobs Fit COVID-19 Labor Market Information Report. And it tells about how the pandemic has reshaped the Philippine labor market. Thanks to Dole for uh, sending me this. Uh, kaya alam na ng Dole kung bakit ako humingi, di ba? So, uh, ito yung isang labor market information report that I thought I should share with you para alam ninyo kung ano yung hahanapin ninyo in an LMI report. Uh, of course, andyan yung authors. Uh, makikita mo agad yung table of contents. Yan. May executive summary. The whole report has a summary, executive summary, makikita natin. May introduction. Noong pre-pandemic, anong sitwasyon ng employment? Ano ang key employment indicators? And then, during the pandemic, that's your topic number three, the effect of community quarantine to the labor market, labor local labor market. Yung impact on employment based on the labor force survey and the employment impact based on DOLE administrative data. Tapos meron din siya on labor supply profile. Ano yung, what, uh, what are the industries that demand labor? Uh, and then ano yung mga job search trends? And then ang gobyerno from government policy, ano ginawa niya in response to affected workers? Diba? Tapos yung private sector contribution to job protection and employment preservation. So the shift to the new normal, the future labor market. So, ano yung policy ngayon? Rebound, recharge, recover. This is the program of the Philippine government for economic recovery with equity and solidarity. Diba? Kailangan yung mga tao ay matatag and mentally healthy. Kaya lahat ng mga possible na uh, adjustments and uh, considerations binibigay kasi yung number one ngayon ay tao. Diba? So, napakaganda. You have the industry outlook. Uh, on page 21 following you the wholesale and retail trade construction ITDPM manufacturing education HRT hotel restaurant and tourism agribusiness health and wellness transport and logistics banking and finance and then adopting digital technology guys kayong mga digital natives come on keep on growing uh, okay if you need to play maglaro kayo pero wag nyo ubusin yung oras yung sa laro no? You have to develop your technology skills. Napaka taas ng demand ngayon. What are the job opportunities and relevant skills needed? What are the in-demand occupations? Merong sinasabing mga green occupation. And of course, your freelance occupation. And then the soft skills or 21st century skills. Uh, let me go to that. Mga 21st century skills. Okay. So, kailangan marunong kayong tumingin sa mga graphs na yan. Ha? Uh, ha? Job search trends. Ito. Hmm. Let me just read it to you para makuha ninyo. Ano ang mga skills ngayon sa na kailangan natin sa ating uh, sitwasyon? Uh, saan na yun? I got the page number. See? Wholesale and retail trade, ang daming demand, di ba? Uh, ito yung uh, topic on uh, labor market outlook, industry drivers, and then the employment generators, di ba? Tapos, uh, let me just go to that thing. Yan, ito yung occupation. 
and saang regions may malaki na demand for wholesale and retail ncr uh, car regions 1 2 3 4 a 4 b 5 6 7 8 9 a 10 and 12 wholesale and retail across grabe grabe yung magandang information tapos uh, in demand occupations accountant kaya ang daming gusto maging accountant accounting personnel uh, utility workers uh, kasi yun na nga ang dami ang laki ng demand so really there is no room for depression guys uh, like exercise kayo yeah, maraming kakailanganin kayo ito meron tayong sinasabing green occupation you know? tapos uh, freelance occupations IT specialist, sales executive. Pag sinabing freelance, you can move from one company to the other as an IT specialist, di ba? Uh, ito yung mga 36 of them na mga freelance occupations. Yan, these are your soft skills or 21st century skills. Kailangan mong naging team player. Mataas ang social awareness mo, uh, sensitivity to the problem, and your self-motivation. You're planning and organizing your decision making, creative problem solving, your innovation, English functional skill and comprehension, and multitasking. Mga kailangan natin yun. We may be low in that, in the, uh, itong areas na to, but it's never too late to grow. Diba? Adult learning. Tapos ito pa, dagdagan natin itong uh, financial literacy, digital literacy, occupational safety and health skills. And then your stress tolerance. Huh? So uh, exercise every day and always be ready for combat. Parang mga sundalo. The soldiers, my father is, was, he is dead na. My father always taught us to always be ready every day. So you have to always make yourself healthy. Eat well, rest well, and wag kang babatug-batugan kasi pag nabatugan ka, uh, marami ang magkakaroon ng trabaho, ikaw ay mawawalan. Nga nga ka. So, uh, I hope uh, itong ano na to, itong uh, aking presentation, nasana ako na ngayon. Uh, nasana, teka muna. Ha? There you are. That's your sample LMI. Natapos na akong i-present sa'yo. Then, let's uh, ask ourselves, ano bang nabigay ng presentation sa'yo? What has it done to you? Paano ka naapektuhan after listening and knowing my presentation on LMI? Uh, paano mo gagamitin itong LMI sa buhay mo as a career? Tapos ngayon siguro ask yourself, of course all of us are hungry, that's one of our needs. no? Name one need you now have <laughs> as you proceed in considering your life, career, career goals and actions to take to succeed. So anong kailangan mo? And let us know because the Admission Guidance and Testing Center, the Job Placement Services, we are here to be of help to you. So that, sabi nga ng ating tagline sa school, your success will be achieved. Your success, our word. Thank you very much for listening and may God bless you. All right, so thank you so much, Father Bernard, uh, uh, for our audience. Um, si Father Bernard na pong ating last speaker. So if you have questions, ibato nyo na lahat bago matapos ang ating session. And of course, Father Bernard, Bernard will help us answer all your questions. So um, while waiting for your question, Father Bernard, I'll be um, um, asking na po muna. No? So um, it's finally... Uh, uh, Nice to meet you, Father. So uh, the last time I I went to uh, uh, DWCL, po I visited DWCL as speaker, po uh, I didn't get the chance to <laughs> to uh, to meet you. So it was uh, Miss um, Bang, I think, um, na nag um, uh, show me around po the uh, uh, at DWCL. So uh, uh, nice meeting you, Father Bernard. So um, for uh, the questions, so first po um. Actually, sir, it, uh, Father, it, uh, it was my first time po hearing about labor market, no? So, um, uh, so I was actually curious then po about labor market. And um, oh, oh, um, 
how is DWCL providing timely, relevant, and accurate signals on the current labor market such as an in-demand job scope? Um, number one, we are in partnership with certain companies who are looking for jobs. Diba? So we post them. We have uh, we have bulletin boards here. Kaya lang, siyempre, hindi yung mga studyante ngayon dahil sa mga online learning sila puro nasa bahay. Kaya yung ginawa namin was to put this job, uh, occupy yung mga vacancy posts sa aming, ano, sa aming uh, web pages. No? Uh, so that in, in a way, makikita nila. And we also gather the uh, graduation directory. Kaya minimessage namin yung mga yan. We send them, ay merong, ano, merong mga job requirements ngayon. Like for example, yesterday I just got, uh, the other day, today is uh, Thursday, Tuesday, I got an email from one of the uh, microfinance companies. Naganap sila ng mga nakatapos ng accounting and business related. Kasi yun nga, microfinance ang kanilang company. So mga pautang yan, paniningil, tax paying, and all these other jobs. So nag-advertise kami so that uh, yung mga graduates, they can already start uh, contacting us. And then we give them the vacancy. So sila nang bahala mag-apply doon sa company. So yeah, we bridge them. Uh, we bridge the need of the company with the uh, needs of the job-seeking community, yung mga student, mga, mga graduate pa lang or mga alumni. And uh, dito sa Divine, pag nag-job fair kami, uh, we accept not just our graduating students, we welcome our alumni and also mga walk-ins. Kasi ako, I, I, I do that from a missionary perspective. I am here sent not just for the Divine Word College of Legaspi clients. I'm also sent here for the for everyone in the Bicol region. So kung may mga nagaanap ng trabaho dyan, uh, we welcome them. You know? they, they can come and join us. And we also share with them this uh, Jobs 180 technology na makagawa sila ng resume link. It's free naman, di ba? Wala namang gastos. Uh, yes, and in fact, if they want to use our computers, we make them use our computers. Para, kumbaga sa atin, lahat ng possibilities ha, na may bigay sa kanila, there should be no reason not to make it because the opportunities, the resources are available. Magsalita ka lang, sabi nga, humingi ka lang at ibibigay sa iyo. Basta at nandiyan. Alright, thank you po, Father. So that's why po yung digital enhancement for career guidance is um a really a need po no kasi sobrang uh, halos lahat ngayon ng estudyante ay um um doing now um uh, virtually po online na po no so um next question father is um um what is the biggest role of labor market information in guiding educational and occupational choices po um uh, so far of course for example mga developments dito sa sa Divine, like, we took away some of the programs kasi kakaunti lang ang mga pumapasok. And then malaki ang aming uh, maintenance uh, expenses for that. Uh, faculty pa lang, maintenance ng faculty. Talagang kakapusin kung kakaunti lang ang mga sudyante mo. Pero kung meron kaming uh, information, for example, dahil sa napakalaki ng demand for accountancy ngayon, kaya yun, uh, we opened talagang that field makikita natin because of the high demand, pati na rin sa pag-aaral, we provide all the needed uh, support para maging mas matatag pa yung itong department na to, yung School of Business Management and Accountancy, School of Hospitality Management, Nursing, tapos yung Engineering and Computer Sciences, and then of course yung ating Education uh, and uh, Education Arts and Sciences. Uh, may Psychology, may Nagbukas kami ng bagong department ngayon, which is of course uh, very new. This is on human services because uh, there is a very high need for people in the helping industry. Uh, para na rin maka-branch out. Kasi may mga gustong mag-social work na hindi naman nakakapasok. Yan, pasok sila sa human services, which is a very good department also. And of course, yung library science. So sana uh, we recommend that area kasi grabe ang demand for that. Father, may mga library science graduates ba kayo? I think we have 10 who will be graduating. And we we usually get a 
high passing uh, rate kaya bago pa man kahit na hindi wala pa silang lisensya kinukuha na sila bilang librarian ang ganda and then uh, LMI ako mismo uh, we usually do that after a certain period naman eh it's always uh, ang LMI is not about the immediate yung for example yung ngayon kasi napaka volatile pa pero after for example the first quarter pinag-aaralan namin ah ito yung mga required na mga jobs tapos ang dami talaga for example yung sa DSWD uh, nagpadala sila sa amin ng listahan ng mga applicants grabe ang demand napaka ay ang ang supply mga gusto magtrabaho over 3000 for just a few of the job positions available sa DSWD grabe grabe at tapos mag-apply ka uh, kulang ang yung skills kaya yung sinasabing job mismatch kaya napakalaki ng uh, challenge sa atin sa amin and also for you who are looking for a job uh, magbasa-basa ho tayo and check it out sa sarili kaya ko ba ano kung kulang ko and how can we here at the AGTC sa Divine help you paano kami makatulong sa inyo just be open and we'll find ways uh, kahit na hindi kami employed ng video <laughs> <laughs> Na ano pa rin ni Father po na rin na sagri pa. Ayan, so another um, question, Father, thank you for um, answering that one. Um, how would the labor market po um, impact the economic growth? Can you repeat that question, please? How would the uh, labor market labor impact, market the economy? impact like, economic growth? Oh yeah, kasi yun na nga, take for example itong ating uh, labor market, labor supply, eh, karamihan sa ating labor supply, kinakain ng ibang bansa kasi mas malaki ang bayad sa kanila, di ba? Kaya, for example, yung ating requirement for experts in IT, pag kinain yan abroad, we will only get people with uh, with such abilities. Yung pinaka-latest, for example, itong mga seaman, nabanggit ito as a campaign uh, topic kasi napansin nila, pinag-aralan nila yung... Uh, yung trabaho ng ating mga seafarers, mga seaman and sea women. Uh, ang taas ng demand abroad for us tayo mga Pilipino. Kaya lang ang binibigay sa atin na trabaho ay commensurate sa ating training and skills. So napansin ng isang kampo, sabi nila, "Wait a minute, I think uh, since mataas ang demand for Filipino seafarers, how about if we improve their training para maka meet tayo sa requirement ng mga higher paying employment in the maritime industry, di ba? Karamihan sa mga managerial positions, yung mga yung anong tawag diyan sa nag, uh, nag magmamaneho ng mga barko, mga captain of the ship, uh, kakaunti lang ang Pilipino. And sila pa naman yung higher mataas ang paying uh, sweldo sa kanila. So tayo hanggang peon lang tayo, cargador lang tayo, taga tiktik lang tayo ng kalawang luto lang tayo, magkano lang ang swelo dyan. And we also train ourselves to be uh, feeling natin, magkaroon ako ng $1,000 per month at $60,000, $50,000 per month. Okay na yan. When in fact, if we are well trained, we can get about, sabi na, kahit mga $200,000 to $300,000 per month na swelo. Ang laking tulong yan para sa atin. Ang laking tulong yan para sa ating mga kamag-anak. Marami tayong mapapag-aral. Mga utang mababayaran natin, ang bahay natin mapapayos natin, makakatulong Cisco scholarship weekend. Kami dito sa AGTC naghahanap kami ng mga donors for scholars. Ang daming gusto ng mga bata makapag-aral. So kung in-improve mo ang sarili mo, if the labor market provides us na ito yung demand ngayon, 'di ba? And you 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 make yourself available for that. Panalo ka, panalo yung pamilya mo, panalo yung community, panalo ang ekonomiya. Everybody happy, so to say. Thank you, Father. Parang I heard nga po yung debate about um, maritime issues uh, regarding skills, um, etc. And uh, uh, was misunderstood na naman by, um, I think, um, others. No, uh, Which yeah. um, means lang naman is to improve um, the skills. <clears throat> Ayan, so... Um, Um, I think one last question. Um, po I um maybe know po your thoughts po on um wage hike petition today since 
um, current po siya ngayon po, no, yung wage hike petition. And um, do you think po it will um, somehow affect um, or um, uh, the, 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 the economy po? How does increasing wages affect the economy po or the labor market? You know what? Nung nagka-pandemia, isa sa mga ginawa ng divine was to make sure walang malalay off. Alright? Walang malalay off. Kasi pag wala kang trabaho, wala kang sweldo. Pag wala kang sweldo, wala kang kakainin. At pag wala kang kakainin, mas susceptible ka, mas vulnerable ka to the COVID. Diba? And pag dumami yung mga may sakit, malaki ang problema ng health sector. Maraming ililibing, maraming malulungkot mas maraming madidepress ay nako nung klaseng ekonomiya. So talagang we move towards keeping our personnel. Talagang tight, belt tightening. Tapos of course, sabi ng mga parents at mga sudyante, uh, ano, pwede bang uh, todo pasa na lang, lahat ipromote, hindi naman pwede yun. So ang ginawa namin para we meet halfway, tinignan namin yung mga libro, ano yung mga charges na hindi namin nagagamit. Binalik namin sa kanila. We brought that money back to the students, to the parents. Masaya yung mga parents. Kaya ang nangyari sa Divine was almost miraculous. Nagsimula yung uh, 2020-2021 hanggang ngayon, hindi masyadong bumaba. In fact, mas mataas yung aming enroll, ating enrollment. Because we look at all sides. Now, when it comes to this issue on wage hike, of course, everybody wants to get more money these days. Diba? Kaya lang, kumbaga sa atin, I think we have to, ano, mag, uh, we have to fill in with each other kasi hindi lang naman sa sweldo nakukuha ang uh, mga pangangailangan natin. May mga iba't ibang mga pamamaraan pa naman. Kung pwedeng i-maintain muna natin yung ating salary rates as at the moment, up until sumigla-sigla pa yung ating economy, di ba? So, ibig sabihin nun, if I were to use, for example, the sample ng nanay ko, yung sweldo ng mga teachers nun, magkano lang naman, kaya ang ginawa niya, nagnegosyo siya. Di ba? Hanap ng ibang paraan, maging madiskarte, na yung pangangailangan ng pamilya, makita sa iba't ibang pamamaraan, hindi lang sa salary, kung hindi sa business, for example. Yan, negosyo ka dyan. Kita ka ng kaunti dyan. Mas matrabaho nga lang, pero at least hindi ka nakanganga. Diba? So sa tingin ko, bigayan yan. It's a give and take. And of course, when the economy become, becomes better, I think the companies will not find it difficult to give what we need. What is more important is yung basic needs natin ngayon. And then of course, we can also meet the challenges ng uh, upcoming now. Kasi lalong-lalo na, Ayaw natin na may magkakasakit pa. So, kailangan talaga mga basics muna. So, I, I think that that's what I can say. Kahit uh, uunahan ko kayo, uh, hindi lang naman divine ang nag-iisip. I think other schools are also looking at tuition fee increase. Di ba? Pero, siyempre, my God, hindi kaya ba ng mga, ba, mga parents magbayad ng mataas-taas kahit mga 5% man lang? Kasi yung mga employees sa gahanap ng sweldong in- increase in salary, Diba? So, eh, paano saan namin kukunin yung increase na yan? Diba? Except, yun na the same thing in the labor, in the, in the market, tataas ang bayad natin sa kuryente, although laging nagbabrown out, yung mga ganun ba? So, if it's worth it, I think people will go for it. Diba? If it's worth it, people will go for it. If it will be worth paying more for the school that you are studying in because your teachers are really doing their best and they deserve to be paid well as well. Diba? Go, sikap tayo. Everybody anyway will be uh, credited pagdating sa improvement kung saan mang area makikita ito. Yeah. Alright, so um, thank you, thank you so much, Father. Um, um, one last ano na lang po, um, um, advice or um, words of wisdom, final words po for the graduating students. Okay. Yeah, um, Actually, when this topic, uh, nung naka, nahawakan ko na yung topic, sabi ko, I would like to share this with this batch. I've been the Public Employment Service Office Manager dito sa Divine. I also became the President of the Albay Peso Federation. Um, 
gustong gusto ko talaga maintindihan ko ano yung LMI na to. And it is kayo po ang bats na finally nahawakan ko nung ibig sabihin ng LMI. So sabi ko, ibibigay ko to sa kanila kasi uh, bilang isang uh, graduate later on, kakailanganin ninyo yung tool na to so that uh, in your job hiring or in your next stage in life, in your career, uh, makakatulong ito sa inyo. So, kumbaga sa atin, make good use of whatever is given to you now. Itong LMI na binigay sa inyo, sana magamit ninyo. Uh, matulungan din ninyo for your parents, lalong-lalo na. Alam ko, may mga parents who can, who can be so demanding. Magtrabaho ka na, magtrabaho ka na. Ma, pa, ito yung LMI. Di ba? <laughs> Maintindihan nila. Ah, ganun pala. O sige, magtanim ka muna dyan ng kamote sa labas. <laughs> I mean, di ba? Uh, I'm just using images, metaphors, so that we can look at reality more pragmatically and uh, realize that lahat naman tayo apektado, we might as well support one another. In that way, pandemia ka lang, Pilipino kami. Divinians kami, we will be successful. So thank you very much for listening. Yung mga nag-attend dito, I do not know kung ilan ang nag-attend. I see 94 in the participants, 93, na walang siguro ng connectivity. But anyway, for everyone who stayed until this time, I hope we have eaten something which is more than the food of our stomachs. It is something for our minds. It is something for our spirits. I hope you find meaning in your life and may God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much, Father. Thank you po. Um, di lang sila kahit kami po natututo. Do. So, thank you so much, Father. And of course, um, um, for joining us today, maraming salamat po. And um, thank you for sharing your time and your um, knowledge, Father. So, thank you so much po. Yeah, and I... Jobs 180, thank you very much for your continued uh, tireless service to our graduating students and also job hunters. Uh, tuloy-tuloy natin ito kasi itong next generation, uh, lumingon man sila sa atin o hindi, ang importante, we did what we were, what we felt we should do so that they can have better lives than us. So, Thank you also, Father. Uh, Thank you, Pop. Andito lang po lagi sa Jokos 180, isang karabet lang kayan. So, <laughs> we're happy to <laughs> to ano po, um, assist you with your events. Thank you, Father. So um um there you have it guys. So if you don't have any questions, um to officially close our program, may we invite Mr. Justin Ben Medina, be a psychology graduating student, fourth year, chairperson, college student executive um board, CSEB from Divine Word College of Legaspi for the closing remarks. And so good morning. Hello everybody, kamusta kayo? Uh, I hope you're enjoying uh, our activity today. So, uh, first and foremost, thank you for giving me the chance to close this program. So, to start, um, one of the great takeaways of this event is how flexi uh, how is that we need flexibility nowadays. Uh, flexibility nowadays is a, necessi is a necessity, and we are constantly being faced with changes that push working conditions to a new level. As the bar gets more higher, we should increase our capabilities in order to meet the threshold set by the labor market. Some of the processes that are necessary for us to know were discussed by our speakers, and I hope we keep it and learn it by heart. So uh, one of the ways we can do to set ourselves up uh, for the future is to prepare by looking into the various aspects discussed to us by, the, by our guest speakers. We know that it's a different world out there, guys, and it's scary for us sometimes, but our journey has led us to unfolding these new chapters in our lives. Um, both personal and professional, and in the settings that we wish to be part of. We just have to trust ourselves, be confident, and do the things that we need to do for us to develop such competencies for our future self. Um, learn and continue learning, guys. Uh, just a few reminders uh, before I end. Um, for our students, we would like to remind you to answer our evaluation forms at the AGTC Facebook page. Um, and to have your resume links na then for Jobs 180. So uh, every uh, every bit of information uh, needed for you to be signed sa, ano, sa AGTC for your graduation forms are already posted at the AGTC Facebook page. 
And should you have queries, you can also message us, message us then dun sa ating Facebook page. So once again, uh, I would like to thank our guest speakers and the participants who watch our live stream who were with us during the entire event. Um, to our speakers, uh, we are very thankful to very thankful to have you guys um, to discuss to us your expertise and insights regarding this new trend of employment opportunities. Uh, once again, thank you very much. Ever to excel, everybody, and uh, have a pleasant afternoon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sir Justin, and um, um, good afternoon. Po. So um, there you have it, guys. Uh, um, we are done with the talk proper and successfully tackled all the topics assigned for today's sessions. So um, we would like to thank each one of you guys for staying all throughout the event. We hope that the webinar webinar helps you be prepared in the world of work. And um, we would like to thank um, BWCL, especially Father Bernard Polera and Miss Rosalie, um, for collaborating with Jobs 180. We would like to thank also the following sponsors for being our corporate sponsors for um, this event. Um, for more career opportunities, guys, you may visit our website. It's www.thechops180.com. And for those... Um, People looking for um, jobs. So Jobs 180 is hiring for a customer support officer and IT officer for web development. So um, please submit your resume link if you're interested at jobs180.com slash jobs180 or you may email us, email us at info at jobs180.com. So please watch out for the next set of webinars we are going to host for. Please check our Facebook page for the topics that will be discussed and you are welcome guys to join in on those sessions. So the program is finally concluded. This is your host, Joyce Katakutan. We will see you soon and have a great afternoon. Ingat, everyone. Hello, I'm Vixie, the automated recruitment assistant of VXI Philippines. Do you want to know how to jumpstart an awesome career? Join VXI and be part of the International ICT Award 2019's Best Employer of the Year finalist. Best Company of the Year Best Contact Center Most Innovative Company of the Year for two years Hall of Fame for Best Contact Center and BPO Company of the Year for 2017, 2018, and 2019 We are hiring account representatives for customer service, sales, and technical support Find us in a site near you, Quezon City, Makati City, Mall of Asia, Pasay, Clark, Pampanga, and Davao City. Enjoy a competitive compensation package and industry best incentives. Apply via Facebook Messenger at VXIPH. Email us at careersph at VXI.com. Text your full name, location, and preferred interview schedule to 0917-777-5555 for Luzon and 0965-932-9745 or 0961-757-8361 for Davao. We can't wait to have you on the team soon! Apply now!